Well, happy Friday, everyone. January is on its way out. So, uh, so the, the game's about to start. All the fun's about to start. Welcome to the live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and, my, and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you are gracing us with your presence, thank you. you know, there's plenty, tons of places you could be on a Friday night, but we are glad that you take some time to come hang out here. And uh, hopefully I can make it entertaining and fun uh, for, for your time investment. The way this works, super simple. On your screen, whether it's your laptop, whatever you're on, your mobile phone, uh, you'll see a chat box. In that chat box, you will see a field where you can enter your question, comment, concern of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't. But either way, either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. Guys, it's uh, it's funny. So we had a, a relatively cold December and and first part of January, and it's starting to warm up like crazy here already, right? So uh, so it's you know we're gonna talk about pre-emergent a little bit. And uh, because we're getting we're getting close to that, I'm getting definitely getting close to that. So everyone that's that's chiming in, it's here on Instagram, it's on Twitter, on Facebook. Thanks for coming to hang out as well. So if you have any questions, drop them in. And I will work through them as uh, as I I can as soon as I can get to them. All right, so let's see who we have in the show this evening. So first of all, we got uh, Michael Anger as uh, kicking it off. He says, "I heard people in my neighborhood have Bermuda grass and they have been spraying Roundup um, on their grass. Is that okay?" Depends on who you ask. If you're asking me, I am not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of spraying Roundup on um, on turf grass because even even when it's supposedly dormant, right? Even when you say it's dormant, it's fine. Uh, you know, if it's not fully dormant, you're going to damage the grass. You know, I tell the story practically every week, but a neighbor that's not that far from me, he his lawn was dormant during the winter, and he used Roundup to spot spray his lawn. And when springtime rolled around. He had a bunch of dead spots in his lawn, right? So to me, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it because to do that, really, you you don't want to spray it at full rates. You need to dilute it. And again, the 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 grass absolutely has to be dormant. And really, the only benefit, the only benefit of using Roundup is that unless you are killing something that or, or targeting a weed that there's not really a selective herbicide for that's, that's difficult to kill, um, or you're trying to save money, there's really no other real reason to do it. So that's why I, I tend to not tell people to do that. I, I tend to push people away from it because it's just not it's just not worth it in my opinion. So can you do it if you dilute it properly, if the lawn is completely dormant um, and you, you do a light spray, like you just spot spray and you do it, you do it light, like you're not overlapping and over applying it? Technically, yes. But that's a lot of things you got to get right. And if you don't get any one of them right, you're going to have damaged grass come springtime. So for me, I'm just not a fan of telling people to do it. So uh, I hear you, Michael. And, you know, that's that's a great question. It kind of segues into one of the questions we had from last week from, from uh, let's see who this was this from. It's from Lavendi. He says, with dormancy, I see a lot of torpedo grass. Can I kill the torpedo grass without harming the St. Augustine? Yes, I'm sorry, the Alpha St. Augustine. I got to make sure I, I answer his, uh, his, his uh, comment right. And so I did some research on this, Lavendi, assuming you're here in the live stream, or if not, you can always check catch it later. And I was not able to find a selective herbicide that um, that was that's very effective against torpedo grass and that won't damage uh, St. Augustine. Pretty much all the articles that I came across, and I'm saying not saying there's not one, but I wasn't able to find one. Uh, they were all saying uh, to spot spray with glyphosate, right? So this, this, along the lines of uh, Michael's question, is to use that to try and get rid of it. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to spray glyphosate on um, on grass you care about. So for, for me, really, the only places where I uh, I will use glyphosate on Bermuda is if it's in my, like, my mulch beds or if it's in the sidewalk or driveway or somewhere where I don't want it and there's nothing around it that I care about, then I will use glyphosate. But uh, as, as a method of um, eliminating weeds in a lawn, there's no, I mean, there's no reason. If you got warm season grass, we live in a world with with Celsius and certainty. And if you're dealing with, oh, with well, crab guys, you wouldn't be dealing with when it's dormant. But I mean, you have you have selective herbicides that are very good that will kill um, the, the, a lot of the weeds that people are, you know, that you fight with during this time of year. So I say all that to say, no, not a fan of um, of spraying uh, grass with, uh, with glyphosate dormant, dormant or not, because if you get it wrong, you're gonna have a really ugly looking lawn and, um, I don't want you to, you know, come back and say, Ron, you told me to spray glyphosate on my lawn and next thing you know, it's all dead and duh, duh, duh. you know, so not worth it. Not, not when there's, not when there's better options. All right. So great question, Michael. Thanks for, for kicking it off. So guys, some cool things, um, as many of you probably already know, the new fertilizers or two of the new fertilizers are live. So, 
uh, let's see here. I'll show you really quick. Um, the new uh, complete fertilizer. This is from last week. I haven't even I haven't even refreshed it yet. So there you go. The new complete fertilizer is live, and the stress are also live. Um, these are in stock and shipping. Some of you guys have, have likely already gotten tracking numbers. It's likely already on their way to you. Some of you that started ordering since Wednesday, Humic Max. Um, this uh, we we are offering it on pre-order. So some of you guys have I said have asked for saying, hey, I want to you know I want to be able to get my stuff and not to come back time and time and time again. Um, so can you just make it a pre-order and whenever you get it in and it ships, it ships. So we're, we've done that. And to help sweeten the deal is if you pre-order, you're going to get to save 5% off of the cost of, of a bag of Humic Max. It only applies to Humic Max, not the only two, not the other two fertilizers uh, through the end of, uh, of January, right? So um, I, I, if you see here, I said, I have it set, set, uh, set to ship mid February, but I anticipate it being here before that. So um, it's, it's, it should be quite a bit sooner than mid February, but I like to give myself a little bit of uh, of margin uh, just for, you know, time and foreseen for, uh, occurrences. Right. But it's, it, it, mid February is an absolute worst case scenario. A lot of things would have to go wrong for that to happen. So it's, it's likely going to be a lot sooner for those of you that are already pre-ordered. And again, if you want to save some money, you want to load up for this season, uh, it's just five, you know, you can save 5% um, by, by pre-ordering a uh, Humic Max. There's nothing you have to do uh, as far as uh, like a discount code, it's all set up automatically. Literally at checkout, you'll see it applied. You'll see it in your cart that you get a discount. And also in, in your uh, your cart at, um, at checkout, you'll see that the discount is applied. But it's it's January, it's a, it's through the end of this month. So you guys ask for like, you know, say I never run sales, I, never run, I didn't do any sales. So you got one, you got one on, on Humic Max, take advantage of it because once, the, once January 31st is done, it's not gonna go on sale for this season. Uh, so. So yeah, if you guys want to load up on it, if you guys like the results you got with it, by all means, take advantage, take advantage, take advantage. All right, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what the results you guys get with the uh, with the new fertilizers, man. I'm really excited. The the uh, the stress and the complete are awesome products. Uh, I, you guys are gonna have really good results with them. I'm really excited uh, to see how you guys uh, how how your lawns turn out um, with the new hotness on, on them. So, uh, so yeah, so some questions I've gotten is as far as, um, when to apply these. So if you want, let me go back here really quick. So if you wanted to, um, like a, a higher potassium fertilizer to wake your lawn up with the stress 12, 0, 24, this one, and I'm sorry, Instagram, you guys can't see this. If you want to see it, come over to YouTube. Uh, the stress 12, 0, 24 is a great option. This is a, a higher potassium fertilizer. So it's a good one to start the season out with if you have a, a Bermuda lawn or if you're looking something for a product to feed your um, your your cool season grass during the heat of the summer, again this has got um, some slow release in it. So as far as something you can feed the you know your your um, your lawns that your grass types that tend to um, have a bit more stress um, during the the summertime, again like your cool season grass, this is a great option. Again, the complete if you need phosphorus or you just want a complete fertilizer, it's got everything in it. It's got nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, some iron, some manganese. Um, you know, it's got, it's got a, it's got a bit of everything in there. Um, and some humic acid and some sea kelp. So literally it's literally, it's an all in one product. You got, you got everything. So you're fully, fully covered there as far as one thing, one product to, uh, to rule them all. Good stuff. All right. Let's see what other comments we have next. So I got the torpedo grass, uh, covered. And, um, and I've also, I've got another question here, but I'll, I'll get to that one in a little bit later on. All right. Next up, we got a uh, Luis, uh, Abi, Abar, Luis, I always butcher your name and I am sorry. A Lu Luis Ayabarino. Here's what you have to do, Luis. You're going to have to like do like a short video and send it to me over, uh, like, you know, whatever, like, like message it to me or something. And, and so I can, uh, you, you come here often enough. So I need to be able to say your name properly. And I'm sorry that I'm always butchering it up. So. So thanks for coming to hang out, sir. I appreciate you. And I think, Luis, you were the one that had a question last week about uh, the beanie. Yeah, so last week you had this question. You said, you're on for merchandise collection. Thoughts uh, slash availability on watch caps, beanies with the logo for cold weather guys. I couldn't find anything as far as watch caps for the supplier that makes the stuff for me. Um, so, uh, but beanies, you have now got that. If you want a beanie, you can get a beanie. I think I already linked it to you there in, uh, in the chat. It's, uh, I, sh I should have called it the Louise special because you were the, uh, the inspiration for it. But if any of you guys want a, um, a beanie, I'll show you what it looks like here. Uh, can I do that? I can do that. So you got a couple different options. I thought about doing one in white, but I don't, man, it's just going to get all, it's going to get messy and dirty. So I didn't offer one in white. So there you go. So you've got, um, you've got black, 
you've got a navy you've got a brown if you like that not for not so much of the brown i like the green the, the the green is fire that looks that looks really nice and then finally like a dark gray if you want that so you got your your options and uh you ask ask and you shall receive so you got it you got it uh louise uh hope you appreciate it um if you get one take a picture send it to me wear it in good health all right, next up, we got Jason up next. He says, let me get this beanie off. He says, hi, Ron, thanks for responding to me via email with the recommended blend to go with. Yeah, so Jason reached out to me um, asking questions about um, what fertilizer, like which what fertilizer to go with between like between the, the Humic Max and um, some of the other some of the other new offerings, the, the Stress and the Complete, um, as well as like, he, you know, the thing is Jason wanted, he wanted some insider knowledge. He's like, you know, I, so I answered his question. He's like, well, man, you mentioned Turplex. You going back to Turplex this year? Or are you going back to, what are you going to do? You going to do 901C? What's it, what's it going to be? So I, I told him what I'm going to run. I mean, pretty much it's, it's not a huge secret. Um, really 901C is what I will primarily be using on the lawn. I'll, I'll likely put a bit of Turplex in there. I'll, I'll, I'll alternate um, with them. Um, and then of course the, uh, the, the, the carbon kit. So your Nutri-Kelp, your, your Nutri-Kelp, um, either release zero or 901C and of course, uh, bio spectrum because healthy soil bugs are a good thing. So that's, that's going to be in every tank that gets sprayed as far as fertilizer goes. And, uh, and yeah, and for me, you know, I, I'll, I'll likely go with the stress to start the, the 12, 0, 24 to start as my first fert of the season and then transition to humic max. Cause I, I, I love the product. It's a great product. Um, you know, I like all of them, but I mean, I, I, humic max I had really good results with, so I'll, I'll see, I'll see We'll we'll play with it a little bit, but thanks for the question, uh, Jason. And if you, again, if you need anything else, definitely, definitely let me know. Definitely let me know. All right, we got Mr. Robert Rainey in the house saying, good evening. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hopefully you are enjoying this little, uh, this little cold, uh, warmer weather we're starting to get here. And we got Andrew Phillips saying, uh, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Andrew. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you as always. And then next up, he says, the warm temps in here in Texas are really causing undulating soil temperatures, causing early growth of my Marvita. Are we still in winter? Yeah, so that's a that's a great point, great question. Um, and you know, in my opinion, we're entering the the window for pre-emergent. Like if you're if you're up north, obviously not. But if you are in northeast Georgia, you're in the south or you're southeast United States, right? So northeast Georgia, um, Alabama, some parts of Alabama, maybe South Carolina, Florida, you know, the along the the Gulf Coast, you know, we're we're getting there. So guys, I went out the last last couple of days. I've been um, taking uh, soil temps and and taking a look, and this is one that I pulled here this, this afternoon before the live stream. And if you look, that's 52, right? I think it drops down to 51 here, but to show that, you know, soil temps are about in the window and this is, you know, it's a, it's a current one. So I showed, showed the current lawn and, you know, we're at 52 degrees, 51 degrees thereabouts. So in my opinion, in my opinion, getting your, getting your, um, your pre-emergent down is within the next week or two is would be a good plan to have, because ideally you want to get your pre-emergent applied prior to soil temps, the average soil temperature being 55 degrees or higher, right? So it's it's not like if it dips in the, 50, uh, the mid 50s one time, it's gonna happen, but really I'm, you know me, I'm a fan of getting my pre-emergent down early. I apply my fall pre-emergent in early September. I do my spring pre-emergent in, in uh, February, late January, early February, and that has served me well. That has worked well for me. There's I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. There are people that do split apps, they'll do like a light application, uh, now and they'll do another one, um, you know, uh, in, in, in April. But I mean, but I, I'm, what I'm saying is that we're getting close to where in early February would be a good time to, to, to look into getting on your, on your pre-emergent game. Certainly if you're uh, near the Gulf coast, or if you're in Florida, then, you know, you definitely want to, um, definitely consider doing that because again, for, for me, it's not worth, um, like a bit early is better than a bit late when it comes to pre-emergent, you know what I mean? So I'll, I will do my my normal application uh, schedule where I apply more than likely um, here within the next week or two. You know, first part of um, probably not this weekend, but uh, but more than likely next weekend is when I'll, I'll look around doing that. And if you guys are interested in that, I will uh, I might live stream it. You know, so I, I did it last year for the fall and you guys really seem to really like that. And uh, so I might do it again. I can do it again this year as well. But yeah, but some of the professional services, and I got a question here about that as well from the maestro saying, I'm seeing lawn companies starting to come around in Northeast Georgia. Is it time for pre-emergent? Yeah, yes. I, In my opinion, yes. In my opinion, yes, uh, uh, the maestro. Um, so yeah, so you know, early is better than late. And to help you guys out on this topic, and of course, it's a little bit self-serving, 
um, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, a video on pre-emergent, like the first like full length video. You guys know I've been doing like uh, YouTube stories and um, the shorts and that kind of stuff just to, you know, of little things happening around the lawn. But the first like actual video for 2023 is going to go live tomorrow morning um, at 7 a.m. Eastern on the topic of pre-emergent, right? So if you guys are interested in that, uh, check it out. It's, uh, um, it's, you know, if any of you guys are new to the channel, you know, you'll, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And anyone that's been around the channel for a while, you guys know what to expect. So, uh, so yeah, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. that the first video, the first like full length video of 2023, uh, drops. So definitely watch it for me. If you guys don't mind, I appreciate the support, but yeah, in, in general, I, I am, or in, if you're asking me, I would get your pre-emergent down here early. I mean, it's not, it's not going to hurt anything. You know, there are, um, not to beat this to death, too much more, but there are, but there's people that will say, you know, wait till March timeframe or wait till the soil temps are at 55 degrees and on, on average. And I think that's just, that's too late because, and here's why, here's my, my reason behind this. Okay. Like when you apply pre-emergent or you apply anything that's soil based, you have to water it in and it doesn't like, it's not like it goes in right away. It's not like it begins working right away, especially if you go granular. Like if you do liquids, it's, it's, um, it's a bit faster for it to become, start being effective. But if you put down a granular pre-emergent, you got to water it in. It's got to get, you know, it's got to get down in the soil and then it will begin working. So, you know, you could see, you could be, you know, three, four days a week between the time you, um, you apply it to, you start getting any, you know, any, any of the real benefits from it. So getting it down earlier is not going to hurt anything. Prodiamine, as far as its effectiveness, um, is easily good. If you do a bad job applying it, it's going to last for three months. And if you apply it properly, if you like the, the rates that I like to use, which tend to be on the higher um, higher end of the annual limits, because they only apply it once per season, uh, you know that's you know you'll get four months easily, well into um, well into to, to late spring, which is when you're going to be good, right? You know, because really you're trying to prevent like crabgrass from germinating, a lot of spurge from germinating. You're trying to prevent the germination that tends to happen in the start to happen in the March April time frame. And a good application uh, now, with, you know, in February is a is a is a good idea, especially if you're in the southeast United States. If you guys are up north, you still got time, but you know, Georgia and south and you know the along the, the gulf coast especially from the southern part of those states uh definitely consider doing it we are going to get some cold snaps here and there uh, between now and you know when we're out mowing regularly but it's still not a bad idea to get your pre-emergent um applied that's that's that is my opinion that's what, I was, what i'm going to be doing and it, it has worked it has worked well for me like i did my fall pre-emergent early and my lawn has no weeds in it right and i've done spring pre-emergent uh again earlier um than i guess some other youtubers will tell you to do it um, but in line with what a lot of the pros do, like if you people around here, like the, 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 like the turf marks and those other services are already around here, spraying in lawns. Um, and I got the, I got a good, a good, um, a result from it. So something to keep in mind up to you guys. There's also some content tomorrow morning for you guys to check out. And I have a beat that to death enough. If any of you guys are interested in pre-emergent, we have prodiamine. Uh, there's no dithiopia here yet, but there's prodiamine in stock at, at the golf course lawn store and you can get it, uh, right there. So it's in the chat for you guys that, that are, that want that. Um, and then man 152 says, I, in, I'm in North Carolina. Should I apply pre-emergent? The idea, the answer, the best answer to the question is, but you want to apply pre-emergent prior to soil temps, the average soil temperature being in the mid fifties, right? So in North Carolina, you're, you probably got, you know, you're probably a couple of weeks behind us here in Georgia. So if you wanted to wait till mid Feb, mid February, that would likely be okay. But again, a bit early is better than a bit late. Is, is, is my, my answer is going gonna, is gonna to be to you. Okay, next up is Mr. Koi Guy. He's in, in the house. He says, all is well, Ron, and yourself? I'm doing well. Can't complain. You know, and living the life, man. Living the life. Having fun hanging out with you guys. He says, happy Friday, everyone, all the way from Jonesboro, Georgia. I know where that is. That's uh, it's a little south of the airport. and exactly where, where Jonesboro is. Every time we have our karate tournaments, I drive right past Jonesboro on the way to, uh, to Perry, Georgia, where we have our clinics. And then uh, Michael is giving some more context on the uh, the glyphosate uh, spray. He says they did not spot spray, but did a blanket of their whole lawn. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll say, Michael, is time will tell. It always does. Time will tell. It always does. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of it, especially if they went out like at full rate. They didn't dilute it. Uh, it's just you're uh, you're asking for it, you know. So I I'm not a not a fan of spraying glyphosate on on grass um again the only benefit is that it's cheap and then it it kills some weeds that are hard to kill with some selectives but that's not the case for most people most people just do it because it's it's inexpensive so 
All right, next up is Doug 350Z Twin Turbo. He's saying happy Friday, all. And guys, oop, we got our first super chat of the evening. Let me get down here. I don't want him to get too far behind for Mr. Rob Short. Thanks for the super chat so much, uh, Rob. Appreciate you. Super chat received. He says, Ron, hey, I just received a gallon of T-necks. You got a lot of T-necks. He says, I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Can you talk about how much material of top dressing uh, per 1K? Yes. Okay, just two, two different topics. But yeah, uh, but yeah, as far as um, how much material, I'm a fan of one cubic yard uh, per thousand square feet. So if you are gonna do, so that's about 2000, I mean, I hate to do it by weight because if, if you get some material that's wet, you know, you might, you might not get as much. So a cubic yard, like by volume, a cubic yard of top dressing mix over a thousand square feet is a good number. It's going to allow you to get that quarter inch to half inch uh, layer that I, I tend to like when it comes to top dressing and it's gonna prevent you from going too heavy. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I like to use as far as, um, as rates, one cubic yard per thousand square feet, especially if it's your first time, you're going to want to be close. You want to be in that range. Um, now if it's your, you know, you've top dressed several times and you've gone, you know, you're doing like a, this is like your second, third time one, if that's you, you already know how much material you need. But then what I, what I found is in subsequent top dressings, you're able to get by with a little bit less material because you're just really doing some uh some cleanup work right you're just filling in you're just addressing where from the previous year and a half or so when between whatever your last interval was but you're not doing like major reconstruction where you're trying to, to take a lawn that's really bumpy and make it smooth you know what i mean so if it's your first time one yard per thousand square feet and if it's you know if it's your subsequent time you can probably back that down a little bit and rob because you have given the first uh super chat of the evening and you, you are now our, I'm sure I spelled it right. You are now our show sponsor. So there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Appreciate the super chat, sir. Hope that helps. So the question was only about um, top dressing. You didn't ask about um, about the about Trinexapac ethyl, about Tnex. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you want to know about that uh, for Bermuda, a quarter of an ounce, um, 0.25 ounces per thousand square feet is the um, the monthly rate for um, for Bermuda. That gives you about three to four weeks worth of coverage of control, control or, or of such better ways is to say of, of regulation, not control. Of, of regulation is the right way of saying it. And uh, so, if you want to do a once a one month application, you could do that. Uh, you know, point anywhere between 0.25 to point um, just under 0.4 ounces. Uh, per thousand square feet per month. Um, if you want to do a split application of it, which is what I recommend, so applying pre, um, Primo on the first and on the fifteenth, uh, what I what I would recommend is to take the monthly rate, cut it in half. So for Bermuda grass, uh, that would mean instead of doing one ounce for four thousand square feet, you would do half an ounce for four thousand square feet twice a month. I I did that last year. Really love the results I got with it. Uh, some other um, some people in the academy did it, and, and other um, you know, it's it's a uh, other viewers tried it and liked the results. So just uh, something to consider if you're uh, as far as how you want to apply your um, your your uh, plant growth regulator, your Primo once you get get to when the time comes for that. It's not time for that yet, but just I figured you, you mentioned it, so I'll, I'll comment on it as well. And again, thank you for the super chat. All right, now let me find where I left off. We got a uh, uh, Jason A. He says, At Andrew Phillips, I have to agree. I just got back from vacation today and came back to green haze everywhere. Yeah, it probably is not going to last, Jason. I mean, unless you, I'm not sure where in the country exactly you are, but um, if you're getting a little bit of green up, we are we are going to get more cold weather this season. We are. We, we're not. We're not done. We're not going to go from here into the 60s. Um, we're not consistently anyway. Um, in the next, you know, anytime soon. Uh, but that said, you know, early February, I still, I'm, I'm still a fan of, of getting my pre emergent down. I, in other words, I have seen no negatives from doing so because the, 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 if you're trying to play this out, you say, if you apply it too early, um, you know, you may not get the, the, um, the length of effectiveness of out of the product. And I just haven't seen that to be the case for me. Right. So in my, in my situation with me applying it in like late January, early February, you guys see my channel because I show you guys everything I do. Like my lawn gets uh, aerated at least once a year, sometimes two if I top dress, which this year I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not, probably not. Um, it gets aerated at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, and then it gets top dressed um, 
And with all that, with all that, all that, you know, abuse, it, all, all those, those, um, those practices that would make, not top so much, but the aeration, that would make um, pre-emergent less effective, I don't have a lot of weed breakthrough on my lawn. The only place I get weeds on my lawn during the spring and summer is the place where everybody gets weeds on their lawn during the spring and summer. And that's along the edges, along like, uh, you know, where the, the sidewalk or the driveway are. The areas that get disturbed a lot uh, due to edging and also where the heat is where, where weeds more, are likely to tend to grow. It's not like a, even a lot there, but if I'm gonna get, get weeds anywhere, that's where it's going to be. So that's why I'm, I'm just not, um, I'm not, I, I see no negative to not applying your pre-emergent uh, a bit earlier, you know, because not doing it early is, uh, I know exactly what happens if you do, if that happens, right? So something to consider. All right. Uh, Koi guy says pre-emergent next month here in Georgia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I believe so. I believe so. I've had good results with that. So yeah, absolutely. I would, um, I would consider it. I would consider doing that. All right, next up we have VMH in the house. He says, uh, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Patiently waiting to apply pre-emergent soon. Yeah, you're not too far off, uh, VMH. You're not too far off. You know, you are in Texas, I believe, if I remember correctly. So depending on where you are in the state, you know, if you want to wait till mid-February to get yours down, it's not going to it's not gonna hurt anything. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, uh, you know, again... <laughs> Not to sound like a broken broken record, but a bit early when it comes to pre-emergent is better than a bit late. You, and you'll you'll know if you are if you waited too long because you'll have weeds and be fighting crabgrass, and it'll become like during the summer. It'll be a, the um, how do I get rid of this this weed in my lawn um, live stream, which is what tends to happen. All right, uh, and then Andrew says last week I saw soil temps in the 60s. Yep, yep. And then uh, Andrew, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Robert Rainey says, got my pre-emergent down to today. Yeah, so, so Robert, I believe, is in Alabama, and he's he's ahead of the game. Again, not not a bad thing. They're the the pros, the professional services that spray people's lawns for a living. You think about it, these guys don't want to have to come back because if they 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 get it down too early um, and there's a bunch of breakthrough, then they're gonna get called back and get called, you know, a monkey's uncle and all this kind of stuff. So um, it's not just one service. There's a lot of services that are doing it now. now. Now, some of that is due to the number of lawns they have. They want to get an earlier start so they can get it down in time. But um, but getting your pre-emergent down this time of year, especially if you're in the southeast, is not a bad plan. And again, we've got um, you got do the liquid, you got granular. The video is coming out tomorrow morning. We'll speak to the benefits, the pros and cons of uh, of both. So if any of you guys are interested. Um, feel free to check that out. And I've got like lots of other content on showing exactly how to mix it. And I cover that in this video as well too. But if you want even more detailed stuff, there's content that will um, that that I've got on that as well. So good job, Robert. You're ahead of the game, man. You are, you're dominating. You are, you, you, you got ahead of me. You beat me to it. All right, next up is No Name. He says, hey, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. I am letting the lime do its thing and looking forward to another great show. Only a few weeks away until everything is getting started. Yeah, man. It's not that much far off. It's not that far off. You know, you can get, uh, you know, get geared up, you know, get the, get the back pallets, back sprayer out, get it cleaned up, dust it off, you know, make sure batteries are still good. You know, if you need a new battery, a fresh battery, now would be the time to go and order your fresh one if you need one, just to make sure, man, just to make sure that you, uh, you're good to go and you're not, you're not a uh, falling, per, you know, falling prey to everyone else in you know the March time frame. Remember they have a lawn, this mad rush to get the stuff they're going to need to have a good looking lawn. So early, early is better than late for sure. And I appreciate you. He says, let's hit that like button. Let's do that, guys. I'm going to take a sip of my lemonade. I know we're just getting started. We are only half an hour in, only 30 minutes in. But if you guys would not mind hitting that like button ever so gently, I would really, really, really appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything. And it's a great way to support the channel. Appreciate it so much. So we have here in uh, Instagram. Instagram, any of you guys have any questions or comments? Let's see. Who's up next? All right, we got Koi Guy up here next. He says, I got pre-emergent treatment down for the winter time last year, and I saw the difference. Yeah, I mean, that's it, man. Earlier is better. You know, it's funny. It's it, this, this, uh, this year, I've been getting a lot of emails from from viewers that uh, that did a couple things. They did their, pre the ones that did pre-emergent early, they said, thank you so much that for the recommendation for getting it done early. And also the ones that, that you know, that stretched a little bit and got, uh, went with Spectacle Flow this past fall. Like I had a viewer, uh, she, um, she wrote to me and she said, you know, 
in the 10 years I've had my lawn, I've been working on my lawn, trying to keep my lawn nice. In 10 years, this is the first year that I didn't have weeds and POA and all kinds of stuff in my lawn. So, you know, she was very, very grateful. And, you know, so, so not, not that you need it now, but for next fall, if you got warm season turf, look into spectacles. It's, it's, uh, it's a great product. Great product. So good stuff. We got Devin in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Looking forward to some good turf talk tonight. I will try my best not to disappoint, sir. I will try my best not to disappoint. All right, next up, we got Luis Ayarbarreño uh, uh, in-house. He says, I got my Essential G order in, planning a second order along with pre-emergent. Enough in stock, no rush, but the estimated shipping date. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, so what's going to happen is with, with Essential G, all you guys um, should have gotten tracking numbers. It, they, they will, I believe they're going to be picked up on Monday, but um, that everything that you order now is is it's because we have actual inventory for essential g um it's not till it goes out of stock which i, I think there's something like 20 bags or so of it left i mean we, we got we got like a shipment in and you guys have been jonesing for it since um since you know december went in there and just went went crazy on it and and uh, bought it all up which is fine because there's more that's coming um mid uh, mid february but i mean with essential g if you if you order it um now until it goes out of stock which it probably will tonight or this weekend uh then um then you'll have to wait until uh mid mid uh february and again that that's i don't even have pre-orders turned on for essential gs yet so probably after the show tonight or whenever it goes um out of stock this weekend that's um that is when i will turn that on and you will have all kinds of letter all kinds of text all over it telling you hey this is a pre-order like it's going to ship like next month it's, it's this we don't have, actually have inventory it will look it will look like this it will look like how uh, let's see here. It will look like how the uh, this looks for Humic Max. When you go to Humic Max, it's gonna you're gonna have like a big big wall of yellow highlighted text here. It's gonna say, I mean, there's not gonna be a discount on 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 uh, Essential G, unfortunately, but it'll have like uh, ships um, mid February or ships late February, whatever whatever we decide to go with as far as the ship date. But I mean, it's gonna say pre order. Whereas if it says that, we don't have it in stock, and you're gonna be waiting for the time frame that it, that it lists there or or sooner. But if it's like this, it is going to then it's in stock. Anything that tells you that you can just you directly add to cart, we have inventory for. So just to just to clarify, uh, just to clarify that. And you don't have to if you don't want to, right? You don't have to. Um, you don't have to get Essential G or or even do the Humic Max pre order. Um, it's just that some people asked for it. Mainly people that said, "Hey, listen, I, I like your store, but I don't have to come back time and time and time and time again looking for the same thing." So if you don't mind. Uh, just make it available for a pre-order. Just let me know what it's gonna around when it's gonna show up, and I can get it, get my shopping done, and I'm done with it. So like, there you go. If you want to pre-order, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But either way, you are uh, you're good to go. But yes, uh, the essential G. We still have like I want to say around 20 bags or so of it left because you guys like bought it all up like crazy, um, and there's not any more until um, the middle of the middle of, of February. And that's going to be, that's going to be like a supply for the rest of the season. That's going to be, you guys should not be able to hurt me on that one. I mean, fingers crossed, you guys should not be able to, to buy all that up. Um, but the, the, the smaller shipment that we got just, you know, I underestimated how much you guys liked it and it's, uh, it's about to be all gone. So if you want more Luis, uh, order it now, order it this evening. Uh, so you can have it and, and be ready to go because after that, you'll have to wait till mid, mid to mid to pro the second or third week of February to have it, um, to have it shipped and delivered to you. So great question. I appreciate, uh, the interest and the support, sir. All right. Next up is two Trilla. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Hey, Ron, thanks for the explanation last week. It went over well with the sister-in-law. It did. Well, that's good. I'm well, are you being, are you being like sarcastic or did she really, um, did she really like realize the, the error of her ways as far as parking on driving the car on the grass. Here's the thing, you know, from week to week, I don't always remember all the comments, but that one, that one is in my memory. That one is going to be a hard one to get rid of. That one's right up there with the mole and the Amazon driver driving over my lawn and like breaking the sprinkler system. Like that's, that's one that's, uh, that's not, not easy to get rid of. Not easy to get rid of two Trilla, but I'm glad that, you know, you guys had a meeting of the minds and all is well in the two Trilla household. All right. Next up is a question here on Instagram from, the Maestro, it's a great question. He says, does liquid pre-emergent need to be watered in? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, all pre-emergent. So, uh, so whether you go with prodiamine in a liquid or granular form, I'll show you here real quick. Why not? Why not? Why not make it easy? Why not do a show and tell? So we go to weed killer and then because I want to make it easy for you, you can just search for prodiamine. Um, so all of these, all these options, you have it in the small uh, five ounce that will cover up to 6,000 square feet of Bermuda at the higher rate. And you've got the five pound jug, which is a little over two acres. And then uh, the, the 45 pound 
uh, bag, which is around 11,000 ish square feet, I believe, if memory if memory serves me right. But yeah, 11 11,000 ish uh, square feet is what that will do. All of them need to be watered in because it is a pre-emergent is um, it works by being in the soil, right? You, you, you apply it, you water it in. It forms a it forms a a, a barrier that um, that kills young weeds that are trying to germinate. It, it's not just weeds; anything that, that tries to germinate, that's trying to throw to grow roots, it's going to negatively impact. Which is why you really can't, or you, you can't, you shouldn't uh, apply pre-emergent. And then, uh, if you plan to seed your lawn or do any kind of seed on your lawn within the next four months or so. So yes, to answer your question, Maestro, you absolutely need to apply it. And it needs to be watered in uh, after application for it to work. You want to, so, so what some people do, and I've, I've done this myself, is if you don't have an irrigation system, you can apply it. Like say you get a granular, you can go out there and you can, you can put it down when there's rain in the forecast. If there's rain coming in the next you know, you know, two, three days or whatever, you, know, you can get it down. And then when it rains, it'll water it in for you. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, it does need to be watered in to work, but it's not like, uh, it's not like hydrotain where there's like this this really short window like once you apply it you've got to get it watered in immediately for it to for you to get the good results it's better if you water it in within 48 hours 24 to 48 hours um but it's um but yeah if you if you just apply it and then with when there's rain within the forecast you should be good uh should be good to go there's no no issues there but you definitely yes you definitely do want to water uh water it in great question it's a good one all right next up is andrew phillips he says Ron, I haven't done any scarifying yet to open up the lawn and remove dead growth. Should I put down pre-emergent before or after I scarify? I really want to make sure the, pre the prodiamine gets down in the soil. I would do it before. So if you're going to do that's partially that's why I also, I'm also a fan of doing a uh, pre-scalp, um, Andrew. You know, so if you are planning to do a pre-scalp where you're going to turf rake or you want to clean out the lawn, thin things out a little bit, I would do that prior to doing your pre-emergent, especially if you're going to do granular. If you're going to do liquids, not as critical, but a granular definitely, right? Because the thing is, you figure a granular, you, you, you apply it, you water it in until it fully dissolves and breaks down. The last thing you want is to go out and buy an expensive bag of pre-emergent, right? And then be out there with a turf rake and you're raking this stuff into a grass catcher and you're throwing it out. So if it were me, I would do, um, you know, if you want to do a, your pre-scalp, if you're planning to do that, not a bad idea to do it. And then if you're going, if you want to turf rake to thin the lawn out a little bit, if that's something that you're planning to do as, as a prep for the season, you can get started on that. Again, don't go aggressive, don't go crazy with it, but just, you know, a, a light turf raking to kind of, to clean out uh, some debris and some of the thatch buildup and then do your pre-emergent, it is going to help it work a bit better. It's going to help more of it get into the soil. So, so yes, I, I would do that. I have done that. I mean, I've already been, you guys been following the channel. I've been turf raking the lawn, you know, whenever I've, I've had time to do it j just for fun when I'm bored, just got out there and just clean it up. And really the lawn may not even need much of a pre-scalp this year because it's, it's really clean. Like the last couple of times I've, I've, uh, I've turf raked the back lawn. Uh, I think I showed you guys in a YouTube short, like I did the entire back lawn and it was like a third of the catcher for the outlet. So har hardly nothing, practically nothing is coming out right now. So it's, it's really clean. Um, and that's going to help pre-emergent work better. It's going to help anything that's soil based to work better. So hope that helps, sir. If you're, if you're planning on doing it, I see no reason uh, not to ahead of your pre-emergent application. Great, great question. All right, guys. So I know we are only in uh, 40 minutes in, but you know we got 100 viewers here in the live stream. So if you guys would not mind hitting that like button for me ever so gently, it doesn't cost anything. It's a free way to support the channel. You don't have to go to the store and buy anything. It's a, it's a free way to support the, uh, the, the, live, the live stream, the channel, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys would do so. All right, Grace Ortiz is back. What's going on, Grace? It's funny, like, you know, this time of year, everyone starts coming back. You know, a lot of the diehards that are always regulars on the live stream when the season is up, they tend to show back up. So glad to see you're, you're doing well, uh, Grace. Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you as always. And then next up, um, we got Patrick uh, Gates. He says, what's up, Ron? I live in North Carolina and I have Bermuda. How many days over 55 do you usually wait to put down pre-emergent? I don't. I don't, I don't do that. So, and it's not really, it's remember, it's a soil temperature thing. So it's not like air temperature, it's soil temperature is what you really, it's what you're really um, um, worried about. And for me, like once the temps get the average temps over, say like a five day period and the average soil temps are in the fifties, the low fifties, like a high forties, low fifties, like I'm putting out pre-emergent, like I'm not waiting because crabgrass, Patrick, begins to germinate around 55 degrees, right? So you don't want to, you don't want to give it, don't, you don't want to give it the opportunity. And especially if you're applying it the way that I do it, right? So I do a, um, a heavier rate application closer to what the annual limit is for prodiamine, 
once in the season, once per year, and I tend to do it earlier, and I've had really good results with that. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. There are people that'll take that, like for example, the, the rate for Bermuda is um, is 0.83 ounces, but I just say 0.8 because it's easier, but it's, it's 0.8 ounces uh, uh, per year, right? That's your annual limit for Bermuda. So if you wanted to, you could do like half now and then half in April if you wanted, but I have not found the need to do that. A single application, you know, late January, early February, I've had great results with that consistently. It's not like I've, I've done it only one year. It's, I've done that for many, several years and I've, you guys see Milan, it doesn't have weeds in it when spring and summertime rolls around. So it's just something to, con to consider. So, uh, you know, you're in North Carolina, so you're a little bit north of where I am. So, you know, if you want to wait till mid-February, it's not going to be a bad plan. Uh, but, you know, one thing you can also look at, too, is look at what the services, the lawn care services in your area are doing. Are they out there rolling trucks already and spraying lawns? You know, that's a pretty good indicator that it would be a good idea to get your uh, your pre-emergent out in the next week or so. So you don't have to do it, like, right away, but I would I would not wait for it to for the soil temps to be at 55 degrees or several days over that. Because if you look at it from that perspective, right? Um, like we've already had a couple of days here where, you know, in Georgia anyway, we had a string of weather where it's in the 60s because winter in Georgia is not really a thing. It's kind of a, it's an up and down thing all the time. So I, um, so while the most correct answer is if you take a, a, like a five day average and you say if the soil temps are, are approaching 55 degrees, you want to get your pre emergent down prior to that. I just find you don't need to even be that detailed. Like if it's, if when you get, if you have a soil thermometer and you know, you go out there a couple days, a few days during the week and temps are in the high forties, low fifties, it's not a, and it's, and it's late January or, or about to enter February. It's a good idea to get your pre emergent down. You're not going to hurt anything by doing it, uh, doing it early. So hope that helps, sir. If you have any other questions, definitely let me know. And then Brad H is saying, all right, Ron, let's do this 2023. Getting a jump on this dang POA. Recommendations to stop it before I have to pull it out. Well, to, to really get a good start on POA, uh, Brad, you need a time machine. Like the time to fix POA was in September last year. But if you are here, so you're, you're here now, right? Uh, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. If you're doing your pre-emergent, assuming you have more POA still germinating now, that's, that's thing one, right? And um, I mean, a lot of the POA you're going to have is likely already germinated. But if you, assuming you, you're expecting there to, for there to be more, what I would do is if you're going to, um, when you're doing your pre-emergent app, mix a little bit of image in there with it. So do some image um, along with um, along with your prodiamine application. Both of them need to be watered in so they the two play really nicely together. And then if you've got POA already actively growing in your lawn, the pre-emergent is not going to do a whole lot for that. Image will like make it angry, but it's going to take a long time to kill it. If you want to get rid of POA that's actively in your lawn, what I would recommend is going with um, certainty. So as far as a, a post-emergent herbicide that is very good, very effective against POA, um, certainty is what I would go with. Again, this time of year, because it's cool, the temperatures are cooler, realize it is going to take a little bit longer to see results, but this is a very, it's a very good product um, as far against, against sedges and against POA. Make sure you use surfactant with it if you decide to go that route. But um, but yeah, the, the time to really prevent Poe from being a, a big problem in your lawn was September of uh, of last year. But if you're here, you're here. You know, you, you know, we are we are where we are now, right? So if you uh, if you want to target, you know, put a little bit of, of soil based post emergent herbicide to go after them, you can do some um, image um, the active ingredient and Mazaquin along with your um, with your Prodiamine app. So we have Prodiamine at the Golf Course Lawn Store and Image, actually I'll help you out here. I think I've got a link to that. I think I can do that. I think I can, I can give you a link to that as well, uh, Brad. But you can, you can use, you can grab it here or you can go to any of your big box stores and they also uh, will carry it as well. So at Brad H, so Prodiamine and Prodiamine, uh, and uh, image if when you're doing your pre-emergent and then for your um, for your post-emergent um, then just go with certainty that is what you know if you want something that's gonna work faster uh, then I would just do I would do certainty so I'll throw a link in here in the chat for you for that as well so you'll be all covered and there you go cool so you're good to go Great question. All right, I gotta speed up, man. We got a lot of comments tonight. All right, next up is Mr. Victor Stams. He says, hi, Ron, excited uh, for the chat. Uh, question, can I use Essential G as soil to plant uh, Kentucky bluegrass seed in? 
I'm trying to fix dead areas in my lawn with Scott's uh, KBG Pro Vista lawn, but it grows slow. Need a boost. Mm, I mean, can you use Essential G? Yes, but what I would use that's a better product for seed, like so you're seeding a lawn. Like Essential G is not bad if you just want if you want to improve soil quality, um, and uh, you know you have a lot to cover, and you don't want to you know don't have to get out there and, and and spread soil all over your lawn. But if you're up for that, a better option, a better product than Essential G for establishing a new lawn is Carbonized PN. This is the Mac Daddy. This is this is the thing that started it all. This is like um you know the the if you think about Carbon Pro G, um. Essential G, like they are all derived from this, from carbonized PN. So you take like, uh, you take um, uh, a Carbon Pro G and not put it in a prill form. So it's just as, as soil. That is what this is. What it is, is it's half compost and it's half biochar and there's absolutely no trash in this. So you're, you're not going to spend time like having to get debris out of your lawn or anything like that. And as far as something to use for seeding or establishing a new lawn from like seed or sod, this is a great product. It was actually developed right for uh, for like for um, uh, for establishing ornamentals. Like if you were putting in like an expensive tree, um, or you're ex putting in like an expensive um, like lawn. Say someone's um, putting zoysia in, um, and the service that had that that was going to do it had the budget for it. You would use this. You would put this down prior to putting the sod down, or prior to putting the seed down, or prior to planting the, uh, the the ornamental or ornamentals um, and it it does a it does a great job of helping them establish faster so for a seeding project you can use essential G but carbonized PN is more dense right so as far as like making sure that everywhere that you're putting down seed there's all kinds of great great um, you know carbon goodness for the for the seed to to get its best start on life carbonized pn is a better product both are going to work well but carbonized pn is is the one that i would go with if it were uh, if it were me great question um and then i'm not sure when when are you when are you doing your pro vista i mean obviously you can't answer right now but if you're in the chat let me know uh, when you're planning on doing your pro vista uh in the uh in the uh in in your purpose of seeding project good 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 stuff all right so we have another super chat let me get down here and grab it really quick from mr vashon brooks thank you so much vashon super chat received really really appreciate it and he says uh the maestro from uh, instagram oh dude thanks thanks for coming to hang out man i appreciate you he says met you and alex at real rollers with my wife and newborn came over to youtube drop a super chat appreciate you man thank you so much for the love and support and because you are currently the highest super chat not only do you get to support the channel but you also get to have your name in lights for whatever that is worth to you, sir. Make sure I'm not gonna spell your name wrong. Vashon, Vashon Brooks. Vashon Brooks, all right, I got it right, cool. There you go, your name in lights, whatever that means to you, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, for the support and for the super chat, sir. And thanks for coming over, over from Instagram as well to come to come hang out. Uh, we got another super chat, one from, from that Texas boy, Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron and everybody, pre-emergent is going down tomorrow regardless. He's like, I don't care. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting my pre-emergent down. I ain't got time for this. I don't, I don't want to, I want to spend my time in the spring and summer mowing my grass, asking and a or answering questions from, um, from, you know, my neighbors if my grass is fake. That's what I want to spend my time doing. I don't want to be out here spraying, you know, Celsius spraying certainty. I don't have to deal with a bunch of post-emergent herbicides. I want to be enjoying my life. So it's smart, smart. I like it. He says, can't wait to get that Lebanon complete. I just want to look at it. <laughs> Big thanks to you for making these products available for us. Uh, God saying, yeah, man. So this is it. This is what he's talking about. Those of you in the on the gram, this is the as the Lebanon complete. To, to, and to put it in perspective, like this doesn't really show it off what, what the differences are. So this is what a standard fertilizer pearl looks like, right? So this is what so a lot of fertilizers you'll buy online or what you'll find at your big box stores. This is the size of the prill, um, is what it looks like. This is what um, the complete and also the stress prill look like. I wish I could show you there, but you can see there on camera how fine that is. If I can get this to focus, get my face out of the way. So you guys can see how fine that that prill is. It's like uh it's almost like a like a powder. You know what I mean? It's it's not it's like it's like sand. It's like uh, it's very th this stuff is going talking about like about pre-emergent the importance of like it getting past the grass down to the soil where it can begin working. Like this stuff is going to do that. It's not going to get hung up in the grass. It's going to get down the soil. So you're getting you're really getting a lot of your money's worth out of the product. Same thing for Humic Max. Again, comparing Humic Max to 
a standard pro. This is like a this is a like a 210 SGN. This is a 150 SGN. And then for reference, this is 80 SGN. So this is you know pretty much on any kind of um, residential on any kind of lawn um, from um, your like your fescues, St. Augustine or whatever, any like your law, your taller grass down to like really tight, uh, you know, shorter cut mowing heights. This is your jam. And if you're one of those crazies that want to be able to have the flexibility of going from fescue to a green, then this is your jam. This is really the one you want to use if you have a putting green in your lawn or you're cutting like really, 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 really short. And by really short, I mean like like green heights, you know, like under half an inch and you're maintaining your lawn under half an inch, which most of you are not. Uh, because it's um it's insanity to, to try and do so it's a ton of work to try and do that but uh but yeah so we got you covered i appreciate the support of that texas boy we got plenty of um the complete and uh the stress and also humic max wins over at lands gonna be plenty of that as well so you guys we should the goal is to, to not run out this season and once we get um essential g replenished the goal is also to not run out of, of that for this season as well you know that's that's the goal we'll see what you guys do to me but that's that is the uh that is the plan that is the plan all right, let me scroll back up here really quick. Um, and I'll, while I'm scrolling back up, I'll get a question here from Patrick in Texas. And I got one here in um, in Instagram that I got to get to. He says, what are your thoughts on Podium versus Primo Max? The active ingredient in them is the same. I believe it's Trinexapac ethyl in Podium as well. Um, you know, Podium, T-Nex, they're just their knockoffs of Primo Max. Um, I've, I've used T-Nex in the past. I've never used Podium to know. But, um, you know, given that um, Syngenta... Um, makes primo like this is this is like you know as far as your, your name brand it's like your 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 name brand um trinectopac ethyl product and given that they they in my opinion they they um they t they're taking a chance on diy from a standpoint of making like products that are that are typically reserved for the professional turf industry in volumes that make sense for us like this you know primo max is like a, a gallon of it is, is, is several hundred dollars, right? Like a, a gallon of stuff, it's expensive. Whereas now you can get like the exact same product um, that the pros are using in a quantity with a nice measuring cup built into it, I might add. Uh, so for me, this is, I, I will not switch away from this. I'll, I'll be, I'm gonna be using Primo. Plus, I mean, they, they, they are, they're supporting DIY. So I wanna support them, you know what I mean? So between that and also a Celeprin, like again, both available in this, this form factor that really only exists because of DIY. This makes, this makes zero sense for the majority of their customer base because their customers like big, is, you know, is, is big uh, turf. Like people that are, that are taking care of like sports fields. They don't, not, people that are taking care of like a football pitch, um, they're not buying this. You know, they're buying, they're buying it, buy, they're buying it by, in gallons, in gallon quantities. Like Devin, Demir, when he's buying Primo for his golf course, he's not buying this. He's buying gallons and gallons of the product. So for those reasons, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to support um, Syngenta. Plus it's, again, it's the name brand stuff. So why not, why not use the, 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 real, the real deal, the real McCoy, if you can, especially when it's available at a, you know, at a price that's not, that's not gonna break the bank. And you also have the, um, the benefit, uh, Patrick, that you figure one of these on Bermuda will treat uh, 16,000 16, square feet. So if you have the, the typical, four, let's say the 4,000 square foot lawn, you could get by with one, maybe two of these over the entire season. Really one for an entire season is reasonable. And what that means is that every season, you're buying a fresh bottle of, of Trinexapac Ethel, a fresh bottle of, of, uh, of Primo, right? Versus if you buy, um, I think Podium only comes in a gallon and Teenex I believe only comes in gallons. You know, you that's like years and years supply. Um, so that's another benefit to me of just getting, why don't you just get a, like a fresh bottle whenever you, um, you are, um, you start in the season out. So something else, something else to consider um, as well. While I scroll back up and, and look for the next comment on the topic of Primo, and this is just for folks in the live stream or anyone that happens to watch this after the fact. So we got some new, um, you guys are asking about some cool, some cool swag. So we got some more stickers. These are going to start going in like the, in, um, in the fertilizer boxes. They're not in there yet. The new golf source lawn stickers. These are not, um, they're not in the boxes as yet. Um, but, uh, but I'll tell you guys what, if, uh, you know, but they, they will be here, um, starting next week. So if anyone bought like stress or complete and you got your fertilizer, like you're one of the first ones and you didn't get one of these stickers and you really want a sticker, just send me an email, just send me an email saying with your order number saying, Hey, I bought this and I will mail one out to you because I, I know I don't want people to be like, Hey, you know, all the people that waited got one and I bought mine first and I didn't get one. So I want, I want to make sure that everybody's good to go. 
Um, as far as something that is kind of exclusive and something that I'm really only gonna announce on the live stream. So I got some of these really cool stickers made up. If you like cool swag, look at the psychedelic hotness, guys. So I got these made up and these are not gonna be for sale. These are not, these are not gonna be for sale. They're not gonna go in um, fertilizer boxes or anything like that, mainly because they're kind of expensive to make. But if you guys like these and you, and you want one, um, and you're gonna buy Primo. It has to be um, either Primo or a Celeprin um, because this is that I can get this to the warehouse here locally um, and get these to put these in the package. Um, any orders for Primo Max or a Celeprin that come in um, between now and Monday morning, like over the weekend, uh, I'll ensure that you get one of these put in there as well. And that's the only way to get one. You can't buy these. These are never going to be for sale. They're not going to go in the fertilizer boxes or anything like that um, because they're just, they're, it just they're, they're expensive. But if you guys want some cool swag, you want some bragging rights that, you know, you can say, hey, you got something that I can't really get um, that's not easy to get. And you like stickers and you like psychedelics for stickers, you've got, uh, you've got this. So Primo or a Celeprin is what you have to, um, to order throughout the weekend, this weekend, to be able to get one of those if you want one. So there you go, Patrick. Thank you for the question. Hopefully that helps. It makes sense. And our next comment question is, oh, and another thing too, um, if you guys are buying, um, you know, Humic Max or any of the other fertilizers, the, a way for you to get a discount is um, like at checkout, you'll get like $3 off of a bottle of Primo. So if you want a cool sticker and you also want Primo and you want to buy fertilizer anyway, you're going to get it anyway. That's another way of, um, one, saving some money and getting something that no one else can really get easily because they're not going to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll likely reserve these where I'm always going to do either for giveaways for the live stream or stuff like this, like little promotions, but I'm not going to, I, I can't put them in products like across the board because again, they do, they are kind of pricey to, uh, to make. All right. Next question we have is, or, uh, or person in the live stream is, uh, Alex, uh, Ristiano saying, um, what's up? What's going on, Alex? Appreciate you. And then I'm looking here in the grams. I think there were some questions in here that I didn't want to miss. We got one from, uh, Michael Carroll. He says, just got my soil test kit in. Can't uh, wait to get it going. It's been relatively mild winter here in Cape Cod in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Good. Yeah, man. So yeah, if you want to wait another, if you want to get your soil test, if you want to pull your cores and get your samples now, it's not going to hurt anything, Michael. If you want to wait you know, till mid February and do it. It's not gonna, not that big a deal. The big thing is, is that from the time you pull your, your cores and you send the sample out, uh, uh, my soil tends to get your results within seven days. You know, I've, I've been, I've done a lot of soil tests with them and I have yet to send one in and within, and that seven days have gone by and I've not gotten an email saying, Hey, Ron, here are your soil test results. All if you need to do to fix your, uh, fix your, your broken, your janky soil, Ron, this is what you got to do. So, uh, so yeah, you can do it now if you want. You can do it um, a couple weeks from now, whenever, whatever you feel like it. Because really, things are not going to change too much between now and you know a few weeks from now. And for those of you that don't know what what, what he's talking about, he's referring to the MySoul test kit. They upgraded the boxes, man. They got the new boxes are kind of shiny. They got like a Made in America badge on here, so it's kind of kind of cool. But that is what he is referring to. Also here in the ground, we got Lon Attic saying hello from Australia again. My midsummer here, and now it's blisteringly hot. That is crazy, man. It's crazy that right now you guys are are um, you're in the middle of summer and we're freezing our tail off. We got Mr. Alex Lee in the house saying hi, and then we got um, E. E. Williams eighty five saying, "Is it better to push your Bermuda with grass, your Bermuda grass with fertilizer, or to overseed when you push it? Can I use pre emergent Okay, so um, so as far as pushing Bermuda, um, with fertilizer. And it sounds like you're trying to fill in, uh, to fill in bare areas. I'm not, I'm not a fan of doing that. What I would say is this, when the window opens for you to begin feeding your lawn, right? If you want to start feeding your lawn, again, you're in Northeast Georgia and you're, um, like, m like March time frame, if you want to use like a higher potassium fertilizer to help wake the lawn up, I'm, I'm good with that. There's no reason really to push, to put like high amounts of nitrogen into Bermuda, like more than it actually calls for. Because if you've got decent soil and there, um, there you've got uh, heat, which is what Bermuda needs, right? Like you got decent soil, heat, and and most importantly, a lot of direct sunlight, it's going to take off. Like you don't really have to, to push Bermuda per se. Um, as long as conditions are right, it's going to take off. So I would not go... You know, whenever I see you say, um, you know, pushing the grasses with fertilizer, it makes it leads me to think that you're talking about like over applying it, and I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I would I would apply it at at um, label rates. Um, I, it, typically, when I apply fertilizer, I tend to apply well below label rates. You know, the conventional wisdom will tell you that 
Bermuda, you want to give it about a pound of nitrogen when it's actively growing. So like April time frame on about a pound of nitrogen throughout the growing season. I don't get near that. I'm, I'm closer to like 0.7 pounds of nitrogen and, and that's plenty for my lawn. It does great. Um, so I say, I say all that to say, I'm E.E. Williams. I would not go heavy on nitrogen applications in Bermuda. It just tends to cause more problems than it solves. And he says, uh, and when you push it, can you use pre, we're, okay, we're, so we're, first part, we've already answered. We're not pushing it. <laughs> we're not gonna go heavy on the fertilizer. And then can you use pre-emergent? Uh, yes, you can and you should use pre-emergent on Bermuda. The time frame for doing that, if you're in the Southeast United States, that window is opening up now. So now next, within the next couple of weeks, you can start putting down pre-emergent if you are so inclined to do so. I would do it again, because early is better than late. All right. Back to the YouTube live stream. All right, we have a question here from Mr. Andrew Phillips. He says, Alec Cartridge question, verticutter or scarifier? Oh, oh, I can only buy one for now. My lawn was way too thick last year and I want to regularly thin it out. It was also sponging in some areas, thanks. Man. Hmm. If I could only have one, man. I I think last week I answered this and I said, you should get the turf rig. But really, a, the turf rig for thinning it out is not gonna work as well as the verticutter. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, you can, here's, I'll, I'll tell you this way, Andrew. Both are great. The verticutter, you are really gonna only use once per month. Um, you know, when the lawn is, uh, you, you could do it like as, as part of your pre-scout process to help thin the lawn out but you're really gonna use it in May, June, July, and August. You're gonna use it four or five times throughout the year, right? That's that's about what you, uh, how often you can use a verticutter. A turf rake, you can use it for helping clean up after scalping. You can use it several times throughout, the, you know, you can use it you know, every time before you mow if you wanted to, but really once a week, you could realistically use a turf rake um, and get get uh, get good results with it. Um, I will tell you from an appearance standpoint, like stripes, the turf rake really is gonna, is gonna help with that. Like a lot of the stripe action that I've got like in the back lawn, that right now, that is due to the turf rake. That's not due to verticutting. That's due to the turf rake being able to really encourage the grass to lay in the direction that I want it to lay. So the best answer is both. Uh, I'll tell you this one. I'll put it to you this way. If you're if you're fine with doing a pre a mid season scalp, so if you're fine with like say June late June time frame, doing like a hydro cut reset, like doing a scalp to help clean out the the, the lawn or help thin it out because it's going to get really thick, um, then I would say turf rake. If you're not good with doing that, then verticutter. Of the two, you get more out of the turf rake than you do the verticutter. But they're, they're both, in my opinion, they're both. Uh, great tools to have, go, go, both good part of your uh, your lawn care arsenal, but you can, um, you know, you can you can get, you can, you're not gonna get the same benefits, but by doing a mid-season scalp, um, a mid-season like late June high to cut reset, you can reset the lawn, thin it out a little bit, and that's gonna get away from a lot of the cutting issues you, you start to run into with Bermuda when it gets really thick. And the turf rake you can use a lot more often. So yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards turf rake. I think I, I think I believe that's what I said last week when I was asked this or the week before I was asked this. And I will maintain that, although it really pains me. Both is the best answer, but if you can only have one, I'm gonna say uh, the turf rake, the turf rake. Final answer. Great question, sir. And once you get it, let me know what your thoughts are on it once you begin using it on your lawn. Again, when you, when you begin setting it up, as I, as I look here for the next comment, don't go too aggressive. Don't go too aggressive. You don't need to go aggressive. It's a little bit and often. You know what I mean? A little bit, like not aggressive and often is what you're after to really see the benefits without over, without stressing the, uh, the turf. All right, Brad H says, there has to be something better than image. UT did a great video on a compound treatment. Just wondering what Ron thinks. Yeah, so there is, um, so you can do, if you're trying to create or recreate a, um, recreate coastal, right, which is a herbicide that I, I really liked for, that was a pre emergent herbicide, a pre and post emergent herbicide product. Um, you can take image, mix Princep with it, and mix um, Prodiamine. You can do Prodiamine, Princep, and image. Um, and that is a better way in the fall for preventing, um, for preventing POA in your lawn. But if, you, uh, if you're doing it this time of year, I would do um, Prodiamine and Image. And then if you've got any active POA, 
growing, you can use certainty. So you're asking if there's got to be something better than image for POA. There is. Um, you know, there's, there's there's a couple of products. There is uh, there's certainty. This is great for POA. And there's also another product called Negate. Um, N-E-G-A-T-E called Negate. It's a good product for POA as well. The reason why I don't recommend that, don't really talk about it too much, is because for residential lawns, if you're if you're using it the way the label says to use it, which is how you should use it, um, you have to mix the entire contents at once. So you have to mix the entire contents, create this intermediate mix, and then take a couple of ounces of that and put that in, mix that with a gallon of water and then spray it on your lawn. And what happens is you end up with a gallon of this stuff that really is only going to be good for four to six weeks. And then you've got to figure out some way to dispose of it. So, it, so negate is not a great option, in my opinion, for a residential lawn unless you have a unless you have a large property if you've got like an acre then negate's perfect but if you got you know 5,000 square feet 10,000 square feet 15,000 square feet negate is not a good option so that's why i for me if you want a a, a faster acting post-emergent herbicide certainty with surfactant is very good and then image if you got patience image with um you know when you're throwing that in there with your prodiamine application is not going to hurt either because it also takes care of other things too it takes care of some other weeds other than po as well so hope that helps, uh, Brad. A certainty is what I would recommend if you are you want to get rid of POA this time of year. All right, Koi Guy says, I still have some Coastal, so it will be one of my premier choices. Yeah, Coastal's a great product. It's a great product. And, you know, I would, if you still got some, I would use it up. Part of the problem with Coastal, I think they said, is that it it um, if you didn't, like some people got it and they didn't shake it properly, and it would tend to, um, once you opened it, if you didn't do a very good job resealing it, it would uh, it would like solidify and get chunky, so there that was one problem with it, and uh, yeah, so just you gotta sh you have to shake it really, you have to shake it very well to before you mix it because you got again you know, three different uh, herbicides in there, and they will separate when it's just sitting on the shelf. If it's just sitting around on your shelf of your garage, they'll tend to separate. So you can't just open up, uh, you can't just open up um, coastal and just pour it into your and you just measure it out and start start uh, start using it. You really need to make sure it's it's well mixed um before you uh, be used it so uh, if you're gonna do that koi guy just keep that in mind all right next is higgy pop he says hey ron happy friday let's hit the like button let's do that guys we got you know well over 100 people in the live stream tonight appreciate all you guys taking some time this friday to come hang out and talk about lawn care if you guys don't mind from instagram youtube the twitter hit that like button it doesn't cost you anything it's a great way to support uh the channel support the channel all right, we got LG says, good evening, Ron. Received a hot sticker and a nice note in the mail. Looking forward to the new Furts. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing the results you get with them. Looking forward to the results you get with them. There's the the um, the the new Furts are going to be pretty awesome. I can't wait to see the feedback from you guys. And when you guys start using them, definitely leave a review. Like, you know, go to the, the store, leave a review. It does help me out um, because, uh, so yeah, let me know what your what your thoughts are on them. I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to love the results you get, but definitely tell other people about it, you know? So that's a, that's a great way to support the uh, the channel um, as as well. So something else, guys. A question that came up is around biostimulants, right? Like, so why like why are biostimulants important? Why should you use them in your lawn care program? Like, why like why biostimulants? You know. So to help answer that question, so I don't have to answer it over and over and over and over again. Uh, today, um, a, a blog was released on the store on the very topic of biostimulants. So I'm going to put that in the chat for you guys. You can check it out later. This will also be in. The description after so if you guys are watching the live stream after um the show ends you can also look it up there but this is the new blog and i'll actually take you guys there and show you so if you go to share and you go to the golf course lawn store and then go to blog and you'll see this brand new snazzy blog it talks about what is a lawn biostimulant and why are they important and talks about the benefits of it um you know how much like what what it takes to actually create fertilizer and the benefits of using biostimulants like a big part to me in my opinion, is that you, you're able to get more effective use of your fertilizer. Like the reason why I get I get away with running less fertilizer um, in my lawn, less nitrogen as far as inputs in my lawn, is because I I'm I'm trying to be as efficient as possible as of, of letting the grass use what's already in the soil. And biostimulants are a great way to help make that available. So this is a is a it's a fun article. It took a lot of work. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. And it talks a lot about the different types of biostimulants, um, talks about some of the products from Miramichi Green, bi the great biostimulant for your lawn. We're going to talk about Essential G. But, uh, but yeah, ch definitely check it out. Share it with your friends, uh, friends, family, anyone that you think could benefit from it that asks the question, hey, why are biostimulants cool and why should you have them in your lawn care program? Now there's an article to answer that very question. 
All right, next up is to Tr is Andrew Phillips. He says, Andrew Trillo, Poe in my backyard came in with a vengeance. Haven't had this problem in the past. It's these crazy temps, I and I put down prodiamine in October. So kind of like what I, what I was saying about it being a little bit early, being early is better than late. So you have the case of Andrew. Um, and it probably the past has worked well for Andrew, right? Doing it in October. But uh, but had you put down your prodiamine, like, you know, more like September-ish timeframe, a little earlier, you 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 may have, or you, prodiamine by itself, you're still going to have a little bit of POA breakthrough, but it won't be nearly as bad. So, uh, so yeah, don't, let's not make that mistake. This spring, a little bit early is better than a little bit late when it comes to pre-emergent. We've got plenty of it in stock at the golf course lawn store. So go there, go to the weed killer section on the left side. You can find, um, you know, you can find, uh, you can search for just pre-emergence and then prodiamine in both granular and liquid form are going to be listed there. And, uh, you, you want to do that. So you don't have a bunch of, uh, so you're not hating life come like April, May time frame when all the all the nasty weeds start start showing up in your uh, in your lawn. It is much cheaper to prevent them than to uh, than to cure them. Like like many things in life, right? All right, Mazama Blue is back. What's going on, sir? Just happy Friday, lawn, uh, Ron. Visiting the in-laws uh, in Florida, zoysia grass. Sweet, nice, very very nice, very nice. All right, Jason A says, can you confirm the carbon kit applied rate is two ounces per thousand twice a month? Also, when do you think Turfplex will be back in stock? I'll find out for you. Turfplex really should have already been back in stock. It, it will be back, it should be, I should say, well, because I'm jinxing myself. It should be back in stock definitely before the end of this month. It'll be back in stock before you need to apply it to your lawn. How about that? That's, 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 a, uh, that's a promise. It'll be back in stock before you need to apply it to your lawn. It should be within the next week or so. You'll notice that Nutrizolve came back in. Um, some of the other, the other um, products from Ecologel are, are coming back in. So it's going to be, it's just, it's just a little bit behind in the queue, but it'll, it'll be back into stock here soon. As far as the carbon kit rate, yes, for twice a month, you can absolutely do that. The range for, the range for um, NutriKelp, for Release Zero, for 901C, is a, is, a, is a fairly broad range. You can go from two ounces per thousand up to seven ounces per thousand. So yes, I got 901C here. So with this, you can apply this at two ounces per thousand up to seven ounces per thousand. Um, I've tested both ends of it. So I've tested it um, like going really light, like one ounce per thousand. And I've gone up to like seven ounces per thousand. And I found that the, like just going with the lower rate, um, like you, you get the benefits from it. So there's no, I mean, the stuff is not inexpensive. So, and while I would like you guys to buy more of it, I also want you to, to buy it and use it and for you to use it consistently in your lawns because using it consistently is how you see the benefits. So yeah, two ounces per thousand on the first. And then again, on the 15th is what I, is what I do. And you're going to get great results uh, using that. Make sure you also use uh, your NutriKelp and BioSpectrum along with that, Jason. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is what I, I have done, gotten good results with it. And I think you'll be very happy with the results you get uh, if you go that route. Great question, great question. All right, Gunslinger um, Heel says, uh, says, hey Ron, I have a lawn that was sodded six or seven months ago. How long would you recommend before I put down pre-emergent on my sodded lawn? Depends on the grass type. If it's Bermuda, I would be doing it this spring. If it is a if it is a cool season uh, grass types like a rye, a fescue, or Kentucky bluegrass, I hear saying I don't have a cool season lawn, so I've never actually you know tried it earlier than, they, than what most people say. But the the but conventional wisdom says for cool season lawns, you want to give them a year from the time you apply they're they're they're, they're um they're established before you introduce pre emergent to them. Uh, with Bermuda, three months really three months. So if you're if you have a Bermuda lawn, it was six or seven months ago, you can absolutely. Uh, do your pre-emergent application, no problems whatsoever with uh, with doing that. You know it should be well established by now. And uh, and you know if you can if the, the negatives of not doing it, the negatives of not doing it means that you're going to be fighting weeds throughout the growing season, right? It's going to mean you're going to be spraying for spurge, you're going to be spraying for crabgrass. Um, yeah, yeah, you're going to be spraying for crabgrass, spurge, and and Lord knows what else. Um, Whereas if you use pre-emergent, pretty much the only weed that you will have to that you'll have to fight with or have to contend with is um, is our sedges. So like uh, so like some some kalinga, um, you might have some of that. And if in areas of your lawn where whenever it rains, where water drains through, so if you have like a like if you have like a downspout um, where water comes off your roof and a lot of water tends to, to to be and settle in that area or just pass through that area. Those are the locations where sedges tend to tend to like to grow. And, and that's really the only herbicide that I 
ever have to use in my lawn throughout the growing season. So certainty, if I'm doing it, you know, if I'm doing it right, really certainty is the one that I tend to use um, once or twice throughout the growing season. And then um, if I if I do pre-emergent, if, if I don't do that, then it's going to be you know it's going to be Celsius. It's going to be it's going to be a bit of everything. And Celsius is great for for your spurges, for your your broadleaf weeds. So you know th th that combination of Celsius and certainty is what I t is what I recommend because it covers the majority of the weeds that you're going to have, you're going to deal with in your, um, in your warm season grass. Uh, quinclorac is better for crabgrass, but if you're doing pre-emergent, which prodiamine is very effective for against crabgrass, or you're doing dithiopare, which is also very effective against crabgrass, you really shouldn't be fighting with a lot of crabgrass in your lawn. Um, but spurge, yes, um, and sedges, yes. So hope that helps. If you have Bermuda, I would do pre-emergent this spring. If you have a cool season lawn, um, I can't tell you from direct experience that, that, that it's going to be okay if you if you do it sooner than a year. So hope that hope that helps. So hopefully you just have Bermuda and the answer is yes. All right, Brad uh, H is here. He says, I fought POA last year in my quarter inch yard at the start thinking aeration didn't help. Um... Well, I mean, I'm not sure because really, if you're fighting POA, Brad, like, I mean, you, I mean, for a warm season lawn, you're going to aerate the lawn in, you know, the earliest is around, you know, April time frame, and then all throughout the summer. And typically, I'm not saying you can't, but typically people don't aerate warm season turf in the fall, right? That's more of like a thing for cool season lawns. So aeration i mean assuming you didn't assuming you didn't do it during those times so if you if you aerated say in the you know april may time frame that is not what's causing poa to be a problem now you know what i mean the thing that's causing poa to be a problem now is um either we were a little bit late on our pre-emergent application or you um or so you didn't use a concoction or a, or, or a pre-emergent that's that's very that's 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 very effective against POA. So like prodiamine is good against POA, but it's not like spectacle flow. Like with prodiamine, it's going to suppress a lot of POA. It's not going to be nearly as bad as if you did no pre-emergent, but it's not going to be completely clean like how um, it is with spectacle. You know what I mean? So you have to kind of set your expectations. But then again, you look at prodiamine, a bag of prodiamine is like, but mid 60s, 70 bucks, thereabouts. Um, whereas a bottle of spectacle flow like this is, I have no idea what it costs now, but it's um, this was like, it's just in the low 300. So it's very expensive. It's a, it's, it's a much more expensive product, but it is a much better product. So it's, is it, is it more expensive? Yes. But is it better? Yes. You know what I mean? So you get, you get what you pay for when it comes to, uh, to, to, uh, to herbicides. So hope that helps. I'm not sure what you mean about it being a quarter uh, of an inch, but, um, but aeration, the aeration you did, if you did it during the, the spring and summer months, should not be, or not the reason why you're having POA in your lawn uh, this this time of year. All right, next up is, is Patrick Gates. He says, thanks for the answer, Ron. Uh, nothing can stop what is coming. Bring on the green. That's the point, man. You know, you guys are loading up. You get your pre-emergent done, and you get your biosimilant game on check. You get everything all loaded up and ready to go so that when everything starts happening, right, and all your neighbors who just realize around, like, it normally happens around late March time frame. People that are not really in on the lawn game, they're like saying, huh, yeah, I got a lawn. I got my grass, and you know what, Patrick? I, you know, I got. I'm next to Patrick. I'm next to this guy, so I got to run out to like the big box store and like go in there and pray and hope and find something that's going to turn my lawn green. See, you're you're already ahead of that. They're not going to be able to catch you because you, you know you've already you've done the legwork, you've done the prep work to be uh, to to create the lawn that your neighbors are only going to be able to envy, right? So the thing you should do then is just turn them on to the live stream so they can learn, and you guys can both have awesome lawns. You could do that. All right, next up is Ra, uh, is R. Beers Dwarf says, uh, thank God it's Friday from Central Texas. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, should be a fun weekend. Some good football. Who's playing? I think it's, um, uh, it's uh, who is, who are the 49ers playing? 49ers are playing, is it Dallas? I think, I think that's right. I believe, I know the Niners are playing. I'm not sure who they're playing though. I think it's Dallas. So yeah, it should be fun if you want to watch football. Um, this weekend though, also, if you got time, you can do your pre-emergent, but tomorrow morning or at some point this weekend, you guys need to be watching that video that's coming out tomorrow on pre-emergent on this very topic. So tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Eastern, it will launch, it'll go live. Be sure to check it out. And I, cause I'd really, really appreciate it. Put work into it. It will make me sad if no one watches. All right, we have a super chat here from K Randall. Thank you so much, uh, K Randall. Super chat received. This is a pair of characters jumping up and down saying, number one fan, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for all the love and support. All right, 
our next question, our next comment is from Gene the Lawn Brooks says, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Gene. Thanks for coming to hang out on the live stream. Appreciate you. Nothing new on the gram. And next up is Dwayne's World. Party time. Excellent. He says, uh, hello, Ron. Uh, hope you had a great week. I did. It's been a busy week, but it's also a great week. Is looking forward to another awesome live stream. Everyone hit that like button. Thank you so much, Dwayne. I appreciate you leading the charge and um, you and No Name leading the charge and and uh, getting people to to participate. You know, in the live stream, it's a it's a good thing. Thank you for the uh, for the support. All right, tell them we're saying. I wonder what the difference is with Essential G and Biospectrum. I'm thinking Biospectrum will do, but I still need a granular uh, bio. Yeah. So there's so the difference. That's a great question. So. Um, Bio, I mean, I don't have essential G. Essential G, essential G is compost. It is biochar, which if you can think of what biochar is, uh, an easy way of explaining it is if you can take, if you ever take like charcoal and um, if you could take like char, it's charred biochar. If you take like like charcoal that is enriched with nutrients and that um, serves as a, it's like a soil bank for your nutrients, for moisture, that that uh, that makes the, uh, the your fertilizer more available to the grass for longer, that is what biochar is. That's one of the ingredients that's in Essential G. So you've got compost, which is just, just good old fashioned organic material, biochar, which is organic material, but also has benefits um, of, of improving nutrient uptake in your, in your grass. You get more out of your fertilizers. It's got reclaimed coffee grounds, which is another source of, um, of organic material. It's got humate. Um, and it's also got silica in it. So, so humates and uh, the humate and silica are all about helping to, get to improve microbial activity um, in the soil, right? Uh, th while they are, while it's, it's good for that, it's good for helping um, helping what is already in your soil to flourish. The thing with biospectrum is this is actually adding healthy fungi bacteria to your soil because the way the reason why it's important. So I don't know if I've ever explained this. I probably have, but the reason why that's important is whenever you go out, you you take your fertilizer, right? You take like your your Humic Max or one of the complete fertilizers. Like this is not in a form that your grass can use it. Like when you put this down, when you apply this to your to your lawn to the soil, it goes in the soil. The bacteria, the the healthy bugs, they eat it, they break it down, and then they release the nitrogen. They they, they convert it to a form that can be taken up by the grass. That can be used by the grass. This helps accelerate that. This helps ensure that you've got adequate amounts of bacteria um, in in your lawn. If you're someone that that, that does um, fungicides, there's another good reason why you should why you want to use Biospectrum and why it's really a unique product in that sense. Um, if you do fu use fungicides on your lawn. Um, fungicides are like dropping an atomic bomb on microbial activity in your your um, in your soil. It's, it's really hard on the on the microbial activity. Biospectrum is a great way to restore that. So while they they are both biostimulants, they are different. They are different and complementary. So um, I the answer is you would use both. You really would use uh, both of them because the biochar aspect of essential G never really goes away. You know, I mean, biochar it builds up in the soil and it stays there over time. Whereas compost eventually breaks down, the humates eventually break down, um, the back, the bacteria eventually that needs to be replenished. Um, but it's but it's one of those things that um, the they're just different. They're different products. They're both they're both biostimulants, but they are different. Different but complementary is the best way to describe it. So hopefully that explains the difference between the two uh, the two products. Biospectrum being a liquid, you can spray that with everything you put in your lawn, other than I mean you, it, other than fungicides. I wouldn't spray them with spray it with fungicides. But let's say you're going out and you're spraying your lawn with um, your blanketing. You're putting out pre-emergent. If you want to put some biospectrum in there, you can do that. It's not going to hurt anything. If you want to put out, um, you're spraying fertilizer, which is how I primarily use it. You can put, you can um, use biospectrum. So every time I spray my lawn during uh, the growing season, what I am using is a liquid fertilizer of some sort. So it's either going to be 901C or Turfplex. Is a kelp product and there's biospectrum. And then the other other thing that's that's in every tank whenever I spray is um is Primo Max, right? But biospectrum will go with, I mean again, you spray herbicides, you can mix it with that. So it's not it's not limited only to um for, to fertilizer or pre or um or growth regulator applications. You can spray it with pretty much everything. Um the only thing I I, I think that you see limited benefits of spraying it with are like a liquid fungicide product. So everything else you can you can throw on biospectrum in the tank and it will work just fine. So hope that helps. Tell Lauren, great question. Uh, that's hopefully covered by the article as well. I mean, I know we talked about some of that in the article, but that's uh, you get a live explanation as to why the two different products and what the, the benefits of them are to your, to your lawn care program. 
All right, John Rob Will is saying, what's up, Ron, and everyone in the chat. I'm looking forward to using some of that release zero on my fescue line. Yeah, great stuff, man. You'll like, you'll, you'll, it's, it's a great product. The release, the nice thing about the release zero, um, John, um, release zero and not 901C, which you can't really see because the camera's not focusing. So this product, 901C, for those in the gram, this is, is pretty much, this is basically release zero with fertilizer in it. So this, and I'm trying to think here, make sure I don't say this wrong. Release zero and 901C are the only two products that Miramichi Green makes that have 10% micronized carbon in them. The other liquid products like uh, NutriKelp, um, the Shrub, uh, the other the other products they make, the other liquids, they have like 2% micronized carbon. So this is far, as far as like putting, like having a liquid for um, uh, a, a um, a, the ability to put a higher percentage of, of carbon into your soil from a liquid product, Release Zero or 901C is what you're gonna want to uh, to go with, which is why I use one of them um, every time I spray my lawn. But yeah, man, keep me posted, John Rob Will, uh, on how your fescue lawn looks, and if you didn't like it, come back to the store and leave a review. <laughs> It'd be really helpful. All right, next up is Travis Winston. He says, uh, happy Friday, Ron, and the rest of the golf course lawn squad. What's up, Pat? Travis, thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream as well, sir. And he says, hey, Ron, that shirt is fire. Yeah, so this is a shirt that was given to me. You guys know Josh Abib. It's a viewer of the live stream. He, he pops in here now and then. He had this made for me. Um, and I'm up to ask him if he can get me the uh, the design because it's, it's, it's a cool shirt. I've asked him for it once before. I mentioned it once before, and he's like, mm, he's like, nah, I want you to have it. So I don't, I don't think he necessarily wants me to make a bunch of them. But what it is, it's a stripe action, you know, the stripe action tagline. That's, that's my thing I like to say. And then a Toro Greens Master on it. I guess I should get one with the Alit, right? So I should have one for an Alit shirt and a Greens Master and a Greens Master version. But yeah, this is the this is the OG. It was a gift from a viewer, so I like to wear it to show appreciation. So, so yeah. All right. Next up is Gene. Uh, the Lawn Brooks uh, as a question. She says, or Gene, or I'm not sure if it's a he or she, but I, I'm assuming. He says, hey, Ron, I am here in Georgia and I have wondered what time in the spring have you experienced as optimal for straight sand leveling? If you're going to go with straight sand, I'm a fan of doing it in a late April, early May time frame. That's when the window opens. Really, you want the grass to be greened up um, you want to be actively growing. You want to already be mowing it, you know, several times. You want to be mowing it regularly. And the window for me, where I live in Georgia, that window opens up in late April, early May. The nice thing about doing it that time of year too, Gene, is that it's not crazy hot then. And you're also getting free water in the sense of um, like the spring, spring rain that we tend to get around here. So as far as watering it in, you get water for free, which is kind of nice. So if, uh, if you're in Georgia... I would say um, late April, early May is the time to do it. Now, if I can convince you to not go straight sand and do a sand blend, that is something else I would tell you. So while you can do 100% sand, you know, I find you still get, for a residential line anyway, you get most of the benefits of doing like a 70, 30, by going with 70% sand and 30% um, uh, compost or, or some kind of organic material. Um, versus going straight sand because straight sand you're not really adding any organic material to the um, to the the soil and yes while that is a is better for leveling 70 30 works pretty good you know I want to say almost just pretty much just as well and you're also introducing organic material which is going to help your it's going to help the quality of your soil right you know the, you want a great looking lawn create great soil so while you're out there on the entire lawn you're spreading this stuff all over the lawn why not put a little bit of organic material in there as well? You're still going to get all the leveling benefits, um, and you're also going to do a lot to help improve uh, the quality of your of your soil, which is going to, um, by extension, produce um, awesome grass. So just something to consider. You know, you didn't ask, but I just just want to put that out there. You know, if you, if you haven't decided fully yet, maybe consider putting a little bit of you know going with a, like a blend, you know, seventy thirty blend. Super Sod makes a really good one in case you're looking for one. So uh, I can even send you a link for it if you want. Like that's what I've used. They make a really, they make an, an excellent, excellent, like as far as top dressing mixes, I've tried, I've, I've tried, I mean, I'd say all of them, but I've tried a lot of them. Um, and theirs by far for me is the, uh, is the best. So something to consider, given that you live in Georgia, they can deliver it to you. And uh, this is how you, where you can pick it up. So at Gene Delon and uh, level wing mix level mix mix there we go like that good good to go all right next up is lawn guido he says i live in texas when should i level my lawn <laughs> i just answered the question uh 
May to April, late April, early May time frame. Depends on where you are in the state. If you're in northern Texas, probably closer to that May time frame. If you are, you know, San Antonio and south, then a late April, early May. The, the, the answer is whenever the lawn, when you're already out there regularly mowing the lawn, the lawn is green. Like it's not, you know, it's not, it's not still in dormancy. That is when you, you know, top dressing it makes a lot of sense because it's going to recover a lot faster versus doing it uh, when it is, it's still trying to wake up. So hope that helps, Long Guido. We got Mr. Robert Maturos in the house. Robert, you changed your avatar. Let's, we got a plane back again. That's cool. He says, howdy, y'all. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. And then Luis says, Beanie looks great. Thanks again. You are very welcome. And you asked for it, so it was easy enough to do, and now it's available. You can get a beanie if you want a beanie. All right, next is Alex Rist uh, Ristano. He says, hey, Ron, I'm starting to level... I'm starting the lawn over in my new home. I'll be leveling 17 yards of soil once things warm up. Bless your heart. Man, I hope you have help. 17 yards is I I going to think. I've never done I've never done I've never done that much. 17 yards that is that that's a lot. <laughs> that's I don't think between Alex's lawn and my lawn we've ever done 17 yards at one time. He said 17 plus, so it's even more than that. He says, uh, how could I get ahead of moving my common Bermuda uh scalp and power rake? Okay, so is okay, so let me see if I understand this. If, if you're asking, so you're gonna be starting over, you're gonna be doing a renovation. So if you are wanting to kill off the existing Bermuda and then like you're going to level it and I guess then you're gonna establish a new lawn by seed, is that what you're gonna do? Or are you planning on putting in sod and then leveling and then like top dressing the new sod? If it's the, the answer is, is, is the same for most of them anyway. Um, as far as how I would get rid of them, I would, um, I would use a combination of Fusilade 2 and Glyphosate. Glyphosate by itself, one application won't really get it done, but if you combine uh, Fusilade 2 and Glyphosate, like that's a good combination that will kill Bermuda. Like very few things kill Bermuda, that will kill Bermuda. Uh, but that's, it's, but that member is non-selective. So I'm assuming you're doing this because you want to burn down the entire existing lawn and you're going to start over. So you're going to, you want to kill it. And then I guess if you want to remove the old grass bot when it's dead by turf raking it, absolutely can do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Fusilade 2 and, uh, and glyphosate. I use a product, just so I can get you the links for it here. I use a product called Eraser. It is a higher concentration of glyphosate. I think it's, I think it's 41% glyphosate, I believe is what it is. Um, and that, that combined with Fusilade 2, uh, absolutely, absolutely, uh, uh, smokes Bermuda. It does a great job. I mean, well, I should say this. It doesn't, it's not like you apply it and then it's dead like two days later. What tends to happen is for, and this, I did this during the, during uh, summertime too, for the Bermuda that was growing in my mulch beds, is you will spray this combination, the glyphosate and fusilade. And for the first four days, five days, you're not going to see a whole lot. Not a whole lot going to change. The color will slowly start going away, but around day 10, like a little after uh, you know, approaching two weeks, you'll see the Bermuda really begin to fall off. And then, you know, a Three weeks later, you know, a month later, it's like crispy. So I would say if you were if you're planning to do this renovation, as soon as the Bermuda begins to wake up, like say, well, not quite quite when it's when it's when it's when it's when it's when there's more green than dormant, um, that is when you could go after and do this. Cause I'm, cause I'm imagining you're gonna want to do your you're gonna want to put down your sod and then you're gonna want to level. So if you planned, if you planned for April time frame, say early April time frame to kill the Bermuda off, to get rid of the common Bermuda. And then a few weeks later, um, say towards the end of April, to so do your sod uh, and, and and then your top dressing on top of it, I think you'd be really happy with the results you get out of that. But again, yeah, to as far as the concoction, let me answer your question here. As far as what I've used and have had good results with um, Eraser, this product, which is basically 41% glyphosate. So you can find another 41% glyphosate product if you want. And then there is also Fusilade 2, which is um, a, yeah, there it is, which is a um, selective herbicide that is really is designed for killing or removing Bermuda um, out of zoysia, right? Zoysia, and I think some cool season grasses as well it's safe for, but that combination of Fusilade 2 and uh, Eraser, it's, uh, that's the bee's knees, man, as far as getting rid of Bermuda. Um, so hope that helps. And, uh, you know, definitely let me know how life works out uh, after 17 plus yards of top dressing mix. Hopefully you have like a team doing it. I mean, just even one friend 
is not going to cut that. That's that's a lot of work. So uh, so definitely make sure you have a, a you know a, a crew to put down that much material. That's a, that's a lot. It's a big project. Sounds like fun though. Sounds like fun. Next up is Chewy Chews saying, I just smashed that like button. Thank you so much, Chewy Chews. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Thanks for all the love and support. And then Dwayne's World says, hey, Ron, I'm excited, very excited that my fungicide treatment worked and my overseeded perennial ryegrass lawn is about 95% uh, healed. Nice. I like it. The color is back on point. Thanks to Humic Max. Yeah, look at you. That's one benefit. That's one benefit that you get, right, with having a lawn that's, that's overseeded. And you have a like you have a cool season lawn, right? That you get to you still get to play, you still get to feed it, you still get to you know put down put down the good stuff um, during during the uh, you know late fall and and late winter winter months. So uh, so yeah, that that is one that is one uh, that is one benefit that I don't I don't get to have. I'm still I'm still thinking about it, um, Dwayne. You know we're I'm on the fence here. I'm thinking that it, that that an oversee this fall is in is in the cards, uh, but we shall. Uh, we shall see. Um, and you, if, if any of you guys want to be able to share the, uh, the fertilizer, like the new fertilizers with friends, family, um, uh, anyone else, what I did is I created, I created a special link for you guys that you can do, uh, you can use that will, that's easy to remember, right? So you can say, hey, go to the store and go and try and figure out, um, you know, go to the fertilizer section, look for it and all this kind of stuff. Sounds like a lot of work, right? So instead, what you can do is you can just go to golf course lawn store forward slash uh, the good stuff. So uh, for for fertilizers, if you go, um, if you share this link, and again, this will be in the, the end of the show as well. So golf course lawn store forward slash the good stuff that will take you directly to the collection of um, of uh, the Humic Max, the complete and the stress fertilizer. So and that's going to be around. So you can share that whenever whenever you want. And it's easy to remember. Just remember the good stuff, right? When it comes to your lawn. All right, next up is Todd Gleaves. He's back. He says, happy Friday. Thanks for the nice letter. Sticker to be applied ASAP. I appreciate that, Todd. You're very, very welcome, sir. You're very, very welcome. Uh, no worries at all. Send me a picture of it once you do. Send me a picture of it once you do. And then uh, we have a super chat. Let me get down here. We got a super chat from Mr. LG in the house. Super chat received. He says, uh, I'm trying to think three, four, I'm trying to think if there's any, yeah, three, four, five, six. That's what it is. Okay. So I'm trying, whenever LG does a super chat, sometimes there's significance. He, sometimes he's being a troll and like trolling someone else. But this time he's just going, he just went across, just went up the numbers. So three, four, five, six. I get it. Okay. He says, always a fun night to watch the Ron Henry show with a glass of popcorn, <laughs> with a, with a glass of popcorn and a big bowl of scotch. Okay. I'm just gonna let that one just sit there again. I'll have to read it again. Always fun to watch a show with a big glass of popcorn and a, or, or a glass of pop, I can't even say it right. With a glass of popcorn and a big bowl of scotch. Didn't even realize till now, but I'm wearing my OG Stripe Action shirt. <laughs> Hell yes, all right. Well, thank you, LG. Uh, again, appreciate super the chat. super chat. Uh, I think you are now the, the top uh, sponsor. So we will, uh, or the, the top uh, donation or, or to, the, to the channel. So I think you are now the show sponsor. Um, LG star. Why do I not? Why do you have to have the star, man? I got to go in here and pull up my emoji keyboard just to find, just to find a, um, a star, a star emoji. Why do you always have to be so extra? Why do you have to, why do you, why do you have to be that guy? Why do you gotta be that guy? I understand it. You know, why you gotta be that guy? All right. Well, there you go. Your name in lights for whatever it means to you. Enjoy your glass of popcorn and your bowl of scotch. Uh, be safe. I'm sure hopefully JG's around to, to pull it away from you before things get too crazy over there. But uh, I appreciate the uh, the support. Thank you so much. Really do, really do appreciate it. All right, let me find where I left off and also take a drink of my lemonade tonight. And I'm drinking like an Arnold Palmer, so lemonade and um, sweet tea. So while I do that, I can put on some Tango Bolero for LG. Num num. All right. Let's see where I left off. And I left off right here. Excellent. So relaxing, right? All right. Next up is Jonathan Daza. Jonathan Daza. He says, Hey, Ron, I finally did my soul test to get ready for the spring. I like it. I like it. I like where your mind's going. He says, I have a turf type tall fescue and I. I live in Los Angeles. My tests show that I need to increase my N and K 
Would you recommend a granular or liquid fertilizer? Uh, gr I mean, either can work. Granular is going to be, um, what I would say is get this, is get the stress is get this one. I'll show you what I would use. I would get, um, I would get this, uh, this product. So let's go back here. We'll go away from this bio stimulant one. Go to lawn fertilizer. I would go to this guy because you have 12% nitrogen and you've got 20%, um, uh, potassium. So you got plenty, got plenty of N, got plenty of K and you got all the other good stuff that's in there as well. So iron, manganese, magnesium, iron, cause you know, we got to have iron to give you that green pop. So you got everything. It's got a bit, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, great product. That is what, um, if for a soil that is nitrogen deficient and potassium deficient, that is what I would go with. You can do liquids, but I mean, getting enough nitrogen and enough, um, potassium uh can be a bit can be a bit challenging in liquid form i would i would do that i would go with the i would go with the that, that particular product and actually i'll i'll link it to you because i'm you're gonna probably be like well how i would find it i don't have to go and search and do all this work so why don't you link it to me don't do you not know do you not know that you are here to entertain me and to serve me ron i can hear you. That's, what that's what you're saying on the other end right all right let's see jonathan daza Unfortunately, there's there's two of you guys. There's two guys with John in their name. So I think that is the correct one. And there you go. There you go, Jonathan. Um, that is what, uh, yeah, that's it. That is what I would use. That is what I would use um, for based on your soil test results. Follow-up, he says, which gives faster results or increases levels quicker? Liquids are going to be faster. As far as um, uptake, liquids are going to be faster than granulars. This, I mean, but but granulars are going to, you're going to, the, the effects are going to hang around longer with granular, with um, with a granular product than a liquid. So I, I, I still hold that I would go with, um, with a, with a granular. I mean, give of granulars to choose as far as ones that are, that are going to be available faster um, it's really hard to beat one with a prill this size. Get my face out of the way so it'll focus. A prill this size because as far as this becoming available to the grass, it's gonna it's gonna happen that much faster. You know, one the prill size. Also, there's also some humic acid in here as well, uh, Jonathan, which is also gonna help with uh, with nutrient availability. So I, I still stand with um, I still stand with going with uh, the stress the the twelve zero fourteen. If you want a, if you want to go liquid or, or, or just supplement that with liquid or do liquids as well, you could do like turf plex, but there's not much, there's not much, um, there's not a whole lot of potas uh, potassium in that. I think that's, let me look here. There's not a ton of potassium in turf plex. Yeah, it's like 3% potassium. There is this product. There's a greens, um, there is the greens plus. There is this, I'll show you here. There's this, um, this is a this is a, a 14, uh, 14 4, 10, but you've also got some phosphorus, which you, which you didn't said you need, right? So if you don't need phosphorus, you know, and you don't want to put it, and if you're if you don't need it, you, you don't want to be putting um, a lot of it in your in your soil regularly. So this is an option that has a higher amount of potassium and um, a bit more nitrogen um, and nitrogen. So, but as far as a higher potassium fertilizer um i don't know of i don't i don't we don't we definitely don't care any of them so you may have to look around and see if you want to go the liquid route but i i would just get i would get the stress i would go the 12 year 24 and call it call it good that is what um that is what i would do okay next up we go uh second question of course the second question he says how often should i reapply iron if my levels are optimal according to my soul test my soul test um, so what I would do is I would, um, I would have, I would not apply iron just by itself. I would not, I would not go and buy an iron product. It, it take, I'm trying to think about it in all the years that I've been working on my lawn, I've never applied a straight iron product. Like there's a, there's a product called like, is it feature? There's also a product called, um, ironite that are, that are pretty much just an iron product. I've never applied any of those iron. I've always put iron into my, into my, um, into my, my soil, um, as a byproduct of something else that I'm putting down. So like if I'm spraying a liquid fertilizer like Turfplex, which has some iron in it, if I'm spraying Nutrizol, which has some iron in it, it gets some that way. If you're using like the Stress or the Complete Fertilizer, which both have iron in them, that is how I tend to add iron to my lawn in in small amounts um, it, over you know over time, in, in, in levels that the grass will actually use it up. 
Uh, so, so yeah, I would, um, I would just, I would just have your grass get it a, a, with something else that you're applying uh, to your lawn. I can't speak to the products that are just straight iron products because I've never actually used one of them. I can tell you one time I did a test. This is probably you can probably find the video of it because I did the video on it. It's, it's years and years ago. It's probably four or five years ago at this point, where when I was using a product called a liquid product called. Um, it was called, it's a liquid, it's called Brant Supreme Green. It's kind of hard to find these days. And it's something like 5%, it's almost 5%, 4 to 5% iron. And I, I stacked that along with Melorganite. So I was trying to test and see how much iron is too much iron, right? Like what, what happens if you put way too much iron down on your lawn? You hear that, it'll turn your grass dark. Um, and that's what happened. So too much iron, like like using, and that's, that's probably the closest I've ever gotten to using a product that has a, a higher percentage of iron that I would recommend using on a regular basis. And what happened is the lawn turned really, really green, like it turned like really dark green. And then it turned this uh, like a purplish color, like a purple, it's the best way to describe it is like purple, like a like like dark, like a dark purplish color. And then it kind of, then a bit, then it had like a little bit of a grayish, a gray, um, a grayish tinge to it. And that only lasted for, for a, I don't want to say it's probably two weeks. It's been a while at this point when I when I did that. But I mean, my, my point is is that you don't want to overdo it with iron. You don't want to go out and 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 apply um, a straight iron product in high doses. I have found that just getting your iron along with something else you're putting down. So if you like Turfplex is a good option, or the Complete or the Stress Fertilizer, like putting it down along with those is plenty, and you're going to get a great result uh, doing that. If you want to to juice things up a little bit, you could go. You could add like Nutrizol, but even that is only something like. I think 2% iron. It's not a lot of iron in that either because you don't really need much. That's why it's a micronutrient, right? Hence why, why it's on the, it's on the, the bottom of the soil test results. You don't need, uh, you know, you don't need a ton of it to, uh, to, to get a good response, a good color response in your grass. So hope that helps. Um, as far as how often I do it, when the, when the lawn is actively growing, I, my lawn is getting iron every month, but it's getting a small amount of it. And it's in the form of, a product that I'm applying that has to, that happens to have some iron in it, not like a straight iron product. So, hope that helps, Jonathan. Uh, keep me posted on the results you get in your lawn, and uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that helps. Uh, Robert Majuro says, "What are your thoughts on Pennant Magnum versus the Yellow? It failed the Poa test this year. I also had bad time with Dove Weed. I've never actually used Pennant Magnum myself personally. I've heard good things with it. I think that's that's a herb. That's a pre-emergent." that Alan is a fan of like he when I when he was on the show oh man it was like a new year's show probably two years ago at this point um he mentioned pennant magnum and he and he uh he's a fan of it he likes it I've never used it personally myself to know how well it works I I, I imagine well but I've never actually tried it myself to know from direct experience um Robert if you are you know, if you've got warm season grass, recent warm season turf, um, what I would say, and, and you, you know, you got the budget, I would say go with spectacle. Like this, I do have direct experience with, and this will keep Poa out of your lawn. Like if you look at, I don't have a new video of it, but I mean, you guys have seen, like the video is gonna be launched tomorrow. You're gonna see that video of how the lawn looks and also the video from last week or from a couple weeks ago, like that, there's no Poa anywhere in my lawn, like nowhere, like there's none, zero, zilch. And that is from doing a single application of this, of Spectacle Flow. Again, it's expensive, but like this will keep POA out of your lawn. Like that's that's the thing that it's good for. Like if you if you look online, there's a um, there's a YouTube video of a of a professor. I, I'm not sure if he's from Tennessee or which 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 university is, but he he did a test um, showing of different different of different pre-emergent combinations to try and control POA. So Spectacle was one of them. Spectacle did like the, did really well as like one of the, the, the top performance. And then um, he did like just, pr just Prodiamine, just Princep, Princep and Prodiamine, Princep, Prodiamine and Image. And the, the combination that did Princep, Prodiamine and in Image, which is basically the ingredients of Coastal, approached, got pretty close to what Spectacle Flow does. I mean, not quite, not, not 100%, but it's but as far as getting as close you can to Spectacle Flow without spending Spectacle Flow money, that's about as good as um, as you're gonna you're gonna get. So, um, and I've, I've had good results with Coastal. I do like it, but, uh, but one, you can't hardly get it anymore. They don't sell it in small amounts and Spectacle is just better. So just why not, why not just use that? All right, uh, next up is Dwayne's World. He says, hey, Ron, uh, 
Mypridiamine is the water dispersible granule. It's about two years old. It's always been stored in ideal temperatures. How concerned should I be about its effectiveness? It should be fine, man. Should, shouldn't be a problem. By the way, Milo's Lemonade is a game changer for me. LOL. Yeah, it is good, right? Like Milo's Lemonade is just a step beneath Chick-fil-A lemonade. And I, for me, Chick-fil-A lemonade is the best lemonade, you know, known to man. I'm sure there, I'm sure some of you guys can say, no, no, this doesn't better. But like, as far as a mass produced lemonade, it's really hard to be Chick-fil-A lemonade, in my opinion. Milo's is like right there. So you got, you got Chick-fil-A lemonade and then mm, like Milo's, maybe more like Milo's. And then like to put it in perspective, like a, like, you know, like a Kroger brand or Publix brand lemonade would be like way down here. When you be close. So those two are like, for me, those are like, those are the, those are the bee's knees. Those are the Mac daddies when it comes to a good lemonade. So I am glad that you also concur that uh, Milo's is a, is a good option. So good stuff. All right, next is Jim. He says, hey Ron, I just received my Acelloprin SC today. I used it last year with great results. Also pre-ordered my Humic Max, keep up the good work. I appreciate it, sir. I'm glad that you had great results out of Acelloprin. It's a it's a, it's a great insecticide. I mean, you know, as far as like, again, your, your, your Cadillac insecticides uh, that kills the stuff that you want dead in your lawn, like the, the bugs, the, the, the lawn damaging insects, but doesn't harm the stuff that we want to keep around. Tough to beat Acelloprin. Tough to beat a cellophane. And now you can also get it in the smaller size. You can get it like in a four ounce, like this, um, or you can get it in a granular. So it's your your call, however you want to do it. We, we carry both of them at the golf course lawn store. Um, so yeah, it just depends on what you're you're after. The the liquid, the liquid gives you more, like most liquids, it gives you more flexibility. So let's say, for example, all you're trying to do is target army worms. Like you got like an army worm infestation, you're just trying to kill army worms. The application rate for army worms for um, acelloprin is actually fairly low. It's something like uh, 0.05 um, ounces. It's a, rel it's a relatively low rate for um, for army worms. Um, but then if you but then if you are and at that rate, like this one bottle will do almost an acre, right? So if you're all if you had like an army worms over an acre, like this one little bottle will do it. If you're doing it as a preventative to, to treat like grubs, bill bugs, and army worms, the rate that I like to use, and the one that's in the video in the description of the show, a uh, description of the um, of the product description, if you go to the store for this, is a uh, 0.20 ounces. So it's like right face out of the way. It's right here, like that ounce, that rate, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 ounces, 0.2 ounces. That's a good catch-all rate. There, now there are rates that are heavier than that. But again, this stuff's expensive, so why use more of it than you have to? And uh, the, that 0.2 rate is a good, it's a good broad spectrum rate that covers, that covers, um, you know, a lot of uh, like it pretty much covers everything. The only the only reason why you'd go heavier than that is if you're really trying to go up on the rate for whatever reason. If you had a good reason to do so, I have not seen the need to go above like um, uh, 0.2 ounces per thousand square feet. So. All right, great, great point, great question, uh, Jim. Great comment. Thank you for the uh, for all the love and support. We have another super chat. So, so, so Cedric and LG are getting into it. Here we go. Here we go. Super chat for <laughs> so. So uh, uh, Cedric says uh, forty thirty six, which I think. Let me see. LG did four three four uh, three four five six. So okay. I'm not sure what the symbolism is, but um, Cedric is just as trolling LG. He says, Big Ron, are you planning to go back to Real Rollers this season? Looking forward to kicking it with you and the rest of the gang. Hopefully LG will come out this year. Turf's up for downstrap action forever. I, I believe so. I have not had it confirmed by Lee from Real Rollers that it's gonna that there's gonna be another turf park party. I don't have any reason to think that he won't do one. But if there is, if there is one, I'll, I will be there. You know, we'll plan it. Um, you know, we'll plan it to where I can, I can definitely be there and come hang out with you guys. It was a, it was a ton of fun, man. It was cool meeting all you guys and um, watching you guys uh, play with the mowers and and just have just have have a good time. It was, it was funny. Like like a lot a lot of people, I was saying, hey, you want to mow with the Alec? They're like, oh, can I can I can I I can mow with them? Like, yeah, dude, I, I didn't bring it all the way out here just to what? Just to, you want me? To, there's one more you can't mow with, like that one. That one you can't mow because I can't even mow with it. I don't have a battery for it. But like all of my toys, like when I, when I bring them out, the cool reason to have cool toys is you can share them, right? So you can have people, you can everyone can try them out and see what they uh, see what they think. So yeah, it was a ton of fun. Uh, I would love to do it again, and uh, we'll just have to see what uh, what Real Rollers thinks about as far as their schedule, how their schedule goes, and when they would like to do it if they have if they have time. So, but if it does, if they're gonna do it, I will do my I, I will. I will be there assuming they, they want me around. I mean, I can't see why they wouldn't, but but yeah. But yeah, that's my, that's my plan, uh, Cedric. And uh, for the Super Chat, thank you so much because you are now the, I think the top um, Super Chat for the evening. You are now the show sponsor. Your name in lights for whatever that means. 
to you. I appreciate it. And thanks again for all the support, all the support. All right. I got to speed up because I got a lot of questions and I am, I am talking, I'm talking too much. All right. Next up is Clayton Wilson. He says, hello, Ron. My second uh, fall application of Prodimi went down November 4th at 50% annual max. Is it too soon to apply the second 50%? Okay. So you're, you're, wait, hang on a second here. Your second fall application of Prodiamine went down at half rate. Is it too soon to provide another, the second 50%? Yeah, so no. So it in a 12 month window, in a 12 month period, Clayton, you don't wanna exceed that, that um, the annual limit for your grass type. So for Bermuda, 0.83. Um, so if you did Prodiamine in at half rate in September and then Prodiamine at half rate in November, you would not do it again. You wouldn't do it again. You're done with Prodiamine until next year, until September next year, right? So you're gonna want, you're gonna want to switch to Dithiapir or something else. Um, you don't want to. In other words, it doesn't reset. It doesn't reset based on the the annual year. It's in a 12 month period, like a a, tw a rolling 12 month period. You don't want to put more than more than the annual limit into your um, into your soil at any given time. It doesn't. You don't. It doesn't reset in um in, you know the beginning of the year. So so people that want to use Prodiamine for both a fall and spring application, they will, what, I, what in that, those cases, those are the people that will do something like, um, they'll do like 0 0.20 now, 0 0.20 in like April, and then the, the remaining uh, 0 0.40 uh, per, uh, ounces they have left, they'll apply that in the fall. So they'll, they'll split up the, the annual limit between their spring and fall apps. Because we have access to so many good pre-emergents, I'm just a fan of just saying, hey, use Prodiamine at a heavier rate in the spring, um, or a heavier rate in the fall, and then it switch to something else in the springtime. So dithiapir is a good option, um, or in the fall, spectacle. Like spectacle in the option in the fall, you know, if your budget will permits, is is really what I would roll with for your fall pre-emergent, because then you're not really going to be dealing with um, with poannua in uh, in your lawn. Assuming you apply it at the correct time and you apply it properly, you're not going to have problems uh, with poa. All right. Next question he has is Ron: Is there any benefit to using the stress twelve zero twenty four over humic max? There are a few. So the 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 it depends. The twelve zero twenty four has more potassium. So if you want, if you your your soil is potassium deficient, the twelve zero twenty four is a is a better option than humic max because that's a sixteen zero eight. The twelve zero twenty four is a good option if you want as a as the first fertilizer to use at the beginning of the season. So let's say you want to use humic max as your main fertilizer throughout you know may june july august september right but the first fertilizer of the season you want to give the lawn a bit more potassium which is good it helps it, it's potassium is just good and it just helps promote um helps promote a healthy plant so if you wanted to start with that and then switch to humic max that would work well outside of the macro the the, the different percentages of, of macronutrients of nitrogen and um, potassium the humic max has um it's nitrogen, potassium, and then almost 9% humic acid. So humic max is an awesome product in that it's like you're applying a very good biostimulant and you're also applying a very good fertilizer at the same time. So you're applying an excellent fertilizer and a biostimulant. It's like a two-in-one product of sorts, right? Whereas the stress, um, you, get, you get higher percentage of the macros. Um, you get a small amount of humic acid. I think it's just over 1% humic acid. So much less humic acid than what's in humic max. You get a bit of kelp in the um both the complete and the stress which is not in humic max um and you get trace up you get a little about you get micronutrients so humic max doesn't have any iron or um manganese or um magnesium in it right whereas the both the complete and the stress have those so they have a little bit of iron a little bit of magnesium a little bit of mag manganese um and a, a splash of kelp splash of humic acid so as far as so, which is so it makes them more of an of a well round of, a, of an all rounder type fertilizer, whereas humic max is more of like I'm trying to make sure I'm 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 really feeding the soil biology, so I'm gonna put like a lot I'm gonna put a a, a good amount of humic acid, so nine percent humic acid in there. I've got um, you know my nitrogen and, and potassium, but then I've got other ways of doing my micronutrients. So if I were doing humic max, what I would do is I would do that and I would use I would pair it with like Nutrizol, so like a liquid micronutrient product to help to, 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 to help give the, the lawn micronutrients because you're not getting any from um, from the granular product that you're putting down. So just hopefully that helps. They're, they're both, it's like asking which one is better. They're, they're all good. It's like 
they're 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 both excellent products. I mean, both they both they have their they have their benefits in different ways. Um, you're gonna get good results with with any of them. It just depends on what you're trying to do. What I would say is, I would if if Humic Max is a fit for what your soil says it needs, I would use that from say um, May onward. And I would wake up the lawn, or or if you're if you're it's hotter where you are from April onward. But the first fertilizer of the season, I would go with something with higher potassium, like the um, like the twelve zero twenty four. So that's a good fertilizer to start the season out with, and it's a good season fertilizer to to end the season with. And in between, you could go with humic humic max and your uh, your micronutrient sprays. So hope that helps, uh, Clayton. Any other questions? Let me know. Let me know. All right, uh, Brad H says, thanks Ron, I treated last year holding my breast for this year. And then, um, so I got Bashan, I got that answer, question answered. And then we got up here, Sean Scott says, good evening Ron, uh, I need some help with moles. I have a few traps in my yard, but they are outsmarting me. So are you just using mole? Are you just using, just using moles? Are you just using traps? Uh, what, you, what you're gonna wanna do is use a, com use a combination of things. So. Uh, traps and also use baits. Use like the uh, the poisons. Like there's a, there's a product called Tomcat and another one called Talprid. I think that's how it's pronounced. That is um, that is excellent for for moles. So if you do that along with um, you do that along with so the traps, the, the the baits, and then whenever you start spraying like your acelloprin to to get rid of the grubs to reduce the grub population in your lawn, so you're also like going after their food source you're making your lawn less and less attractive, which is gonna encourage them to go somewhere else. But, uh, but it's, 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 a, it's a multi, it's a multi uh, step approach. It's not like just one thing that tends to, um, tends to pull it off. So I'm trying to find the, the poison for you. There we go, there it is, there's the bait, the worm bait. Here we go, so I'll put this in the chat for you, Sean. Cause like start, start using some of this along with your, um, Start using some of this along with your your traps and see if you get if that doesn't help. That should uh should do the uh, do the trick. Appreciate the question. All right, um, is it Syngenta makes podium too? Yeah, but I mean that's that's their that's their their um I mean Pre Primo is their is their name brand. That's the one that they, they don't make a four ounce podium. So I and I and I put like that. I put podium. Um, uh, or like really more T-Nex in the same, in the same, uh, in the same, same breath. I just use, I just prefer to use Primo. All right. Um, but if you, but if you have a larger property, so that's a good point, Patrick, if you have um, a larger lawn, so take, for example, this is good for 16,000 square feet. If you've got, you know, an acre, half an acre, you know, 20,000 square or half an acre, um, you know, getting a larger amount might make more sense. It might make more sense to go with something like, like podium or T-Nex instead of a four ounce bottle. So just something to, um, something to, to consider as well. All right. Talorn says, uh, let's see here. Is how, how soon after a tiff tough sod, do you think it's okay to start applying a uh, plant growth regulator? I mean, it's not, there's not really, I'd say once, once it's, it's in and you're starting to mow it, you can start using plant growth regulator. So until you're, until you're mowing the lawn, until it's to the point where you're, you're putting a mower on it and you're, you know, it's, it's established, there's not really like, why, why would you really want to try and slow it down or regulate or regulate growth? You know what I mean? So I, it's not going to be long. I'd say if you, if you did a, if you did a, a new, um, a new sod installation, let's say in April and by you know, end of April, you're ma you're mowing it by sometime in May. If you want to start doing uh, using plant growth regulator on it, you can. Yeah, so it's it's not like um it's not like pre-emergent or herbicides where you want to be more careful. Like a uh, Primo, especially if you're doing it at half rate, like half rate applications. Yeah, there's not really um like once once you are mowing the grass and it's established, you can you can start using Primo on it. All right, uh, No Name says, I have to ask, how much essential G do you plan on using per month? I tend to use five bags um, per month on each, each application. I put like four down in the back and then one uh, along the front and swale area. If I'm top dressing, I go heavier. I go a lot heavier than that. Uh, but when I'm just, as a, as a monthly maintenance, monthly uh, monthly schedule, five bags is, is usually what I use uh, No Name. All right, next up is Gary Freeman. He says, I just got my uh, soil test. Have you um, heard you said maybe wait until February? Good deal. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could do it now. You could do it in, in February, um, a little bit closer to when 
the season's about to start, that's going to be fine. It only takes, it takes less than a week for you to get your results back, Gary. So as long as it's a bit, you give it time, as long as you, you don't <laughs> go, go, go get, go start pulling cores, um, you know, the middle of March, then you're, you're going to be fine. The benefit to doing it a bit early is if your soil needs, uh, say it's a, your soil is acidic and it needs a bit of, um, needs some lime, a lime application. Knowing that earlier is better than knowing that late because lime, you have to apply the lime and it takes a while for the lime to react and, and to, to be, to, to, to break down and begin, um, raising the pH. So a bit earlier is not gonna, is not gonna hurt things. If I, for me, you know, I don't know if you, if you, unless you have, um, if it's your first soil test, if it's the first time you've ever done one, then, uh, I would do it now. If you've done one before and you already know, hey, my pH is in pretty good shape. I'm not really worried about it. I'm doing it mainly from the from the perspective of knowing where my macro levels are. Then you can wait till you're a little bit closer uh, when the lawn is going to green up. All right, Andrew Phillips says I have a sun Joe, but it's too small. Oh, oh, you're talking about for what was the question for? Were you, did you were you the one to ask me the question about um, which one to go with as far as scarifier or verticutter? Uh, I'm not sure if that's if that's what you're. If it was you, Andrew. Um, but okay. But Sunjos are good, man. People that, that 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 have those really like them. There's some YouTubers that have made videos on Sunjos, and there's another one. I forget the name of the other, like the competing one, and they love it. The only thing, the only challenge with it for me, is that all the debris stays in the lawn. So it's like double work. You got to go out there and you got to run it, and you you know you pull all, all the all the debris up, and then you got to go out there with a regular rake and then rake it all up. So it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of work. So. And if it's, I think one of them has a catcher, but the catcher is really small. So you're going to make like half a pass and have to empty it all the time. So, you know, I, it, that's, that's the benefit of using something with a larger, a larger catcher on it, like an outlet. All right. Next up is uh, Zach Hoyt says, what about Moses time of year in Michigan in between the thaw and freeze? Yeah. Same, same answer I gave to uh, the other viewer, Zach. Uh, I would use a, the, it's in the chat there on the, if you look there, the message I just sent is to Sean Scott. Uh, I would use a, a combination of poison and, um, and traps and traps. You're probably not gonna, you're in Michigan. Um, you know, you're probably not gonna be able to put down any kind of a, any kind of a granular or liquid product on the lawn right now, as far as like, you know, a celeprin goes. Um, but, uh, but like the traps and the, um, and the, the baits are, are the way I would, uh, how I would approach that. Good question. All right. Next up is Jason says, are there any power turf rakes that aren't the Alex? I just can't afford it. Yeah. I mean, there's the, the one that, that, that Andrew's talking about. There's the Sun Joe and there's another one. There's another, another company that makes a, a product that's similar to a Sun Joe. Um, and it's uh, you plug it in. It's like a, you plug it in with a, an, ex there's one, there's a version that has an extension cord and they may even have a battery powered one now, but don't, don't quote me on that. Cause I don't, I don't own one of them. So I'm not sure, but I believe they make a battery powered one as well. And they, those work really well. Like if you look up a guy, um, what's the YouTuber's name? If you look up like Silver Symbol, he has a video on using one of those on his lawn and he loved it. You know what I mean? And, and they're not that expensive. I want to say in that video, they were like, a, like they were under $150. So not, not crazy expensive given all, given what you get out of it. So something to look into as far as that goes. The thing I would say, Jason, if you're going to go that route, make sure you don't, don't set it up too aggressively. You know, when it comes to turf raking, you want to be, you don't want to be too aggressive as far as how um, how hard you're going after um, the lawn. At least at least what when the grass is growing. Like at the beginning of the season, if you're trying to use it to clean out the to, to clean out thatch and and just and using it to kind of supplement scalping, then that's fine. But when the the lawn's actively growing and you want it to stay green in between mowings and not not introduce a bunch of stress to it, go light. Like raise it up to where it's just it's just tickling the turf and just pulling out you know pulling out uh, the debris that's easy to um, to be able to get. So, so there you go. All right. Patrick in Texas says, bam, soil test just ordered. Nice, Patrick. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support, sir. Appreciate the support. All right. Uh, Chris Reddick says, when is the best time to aerate Bermuda? Um, also is core plug aerating. Okay. Um, I are using solid time, uh, the best. Thanks. Um, I'm a fan of core aeration. So actually pulling plugs. So re reason being is that when you pull, when you actually remove plugs, like you think about it, you're open up, you're literally opening up voids in the lawn, which if you have a compacted soil, it gives this the soil a place to relax into, right? So if you ever walk in a lawn that's just been aerated, it feels soft. You can feel actually like feel the soil moving around under your feet because you're you're opening up literally all these voids for so the soil can just it can relax. It's the best way, I mean it's probably a better word for it, but that's what I just I think 
when I think of what's happening, that's what um that's what comes to mind. So core air rating, um, um, I am a fan of doing that more so than solid time um, um, for aeration. And then as far as the time to do it, um, I've done it uh, as early as March. Don't really recommend doing that. There's not really any benefit to doing it. The laundry stays looking ugly for a lot longer. And I'd say that uh, like uh, April timeframe, April, May is a good time to do it. Um, once the lawn is fully greened up and it's growing, like it's, it's, it's taken off and starting to grow, grow um, it's beginning to start growing aggressively. That's a good time to aerate because it's just going to, it's going to recover faster. It's going to heal faster from it, you know? So you're not going to, if you do it in March, what's going to happen is um, the lawn's just going to look really ugly. You're going to have, you're going to have, uh, you know, hold, you're going to have like a, 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 a holy lawn, not in a good way. Uh, for a lot longer than if you just waited a month or six weeks and done it then. So I would I would wait till um, April timeframe. It's a good time to also do your fertilization. Like say you're going to go into uh, you're going to you want to like do your biosimilant and also do like your uh, your granular fert. Like do if you can time it with your aeration, like do that and then fertilize and uh, throw your biosim your essential D down afterwards. Great time to do it. Right, everything's all opened up. It's a great time to uh, to do that. Uh, but yeah, depending on where you are, um, you know, I said, I said April, April timeframe, but that's if you're in Georgia, if you're in Florida, then March could be fine. Right. But the, the thing is when the lawn is greened up, when it's actively growing, if you're mowing it already, it's good. Then you're, then you're good to consider aerating it. If that's what you, if you, if that's what you want to do. All right. Uh, let's see here. Tellorn says, do you ever see a need for the Allet dethatcher cartridge? I'm ready to ready with the verticutter and scarifier, but I never heard mention of the, their dethatcher. Also, have the new grooved roller on pre-order. Nice. Yeah, so the D-thatcher, so I, for my lawn, right, because I don't have a lot of thatch in it, the between the turf rake and the um, the turf rake and the uh, the verticutter, like that's as aggressive as I need to get. Like the D-thatcher, if you ever see one, I mean, it's it's like a solid metal blade and, the, and it's got like, it's hooked. Like the, there's like, it's, it's hooked. Um, like it's, it's really gonna tear, it's really gonna tear and, and really, it's very aggressive. Right, so a, a the thatcher is more so if you have a lawn that's been neglected for a long period of time, or you have a lawn that is, um, I mean, that's the best way to say it's been neglected. You got a, a lot of thatch buildup, like really, really heavy thatch buildup, and you want to use a dethatcher on it. Like it's good for for that for you to help to do like a, a major clean out. But dethatching isn't something that I would do to my lawn every year. Like it's one of those things like say I moved in here and the person that was here like hated the lawn, didn't care about it, never did anything to it. And it was like, I got like, you know, I, like two inches of thatch that I'm dealing with. Like it's, it's, it's a big sponge, right? That's where a dethatcher would be a good option for like that one time, that that first year. And then what you'll find is switching to like a turf rake and verticutting is, is pretty much all you're going to need. Like if you go and you walk on my lawn now, it is, it's firm. It's really firm. It's not spongy at all. Um, So, and there's not really any thatch buildup, you know, so I don't, for for me, for my lawn, I don't see a need for a dethatcher. Like I have, I have the verticutter, I have the turf rake, and I have the sorrel roller. As far as um, attachments for my outlet, I will probably never own the dethatcher. I don't, I just don't, I don't see a from on my lawn um, a need for it. So, so hope that helps, sir. Um, next up, we got career choices. Career choices nine twelve. He says, "Yo, Ron, thank you for the pro tip." Mm -hmm. You're welcome. As I've tried the fall pre-emergent cocktail image predominantly Princeps surfactant. What's your thoughts? Well, there should have been surfactant in there, but we'll let that go. I says, what are your thoughts uh, for my spring cocktail Princep image dithiapyr or prodiamine? I would do dithiapyr or prodiamine. I would do one of those two. I would do dithiapyr or prodiamine. If, you, if you're doing prodiamine and you want to put some image in with it, then fine. Sure. By all means, go, ahead, go forth and conquer. But I would not... You don't... Um, I, like I've had really good results with just prodiamine in the spring. I've also had really good results with just dithiapyr in the spring, you know? So the, the times when I have had, even, even putting image in with prodiamine, the times when I've had to do that, like I've, I've had to do that one time and it was the year when we were getting Alex's lawn, like the year when we started the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, like that year when we were trying to get his lawn under control, that is when I did, um, when I, we, we've used image. But even that with prodiamine was not strictly necessary um, in the, it's more of a fall thing, not really necessary for the, um, for the, for the spring. So I would just go with just, I would just go with prodiamine or dithiapyr. Just one of those. I mean, you know, if you have some, if you have weeds, if you have like POA in your lawn now and you want to put some image in there, you can, but really, um, certainty is going to be better against POA. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to produce results faster than image will. So hope, um, 
answering Instagram here. So hope that uh, hope that helps. Um, career choices nine. 912. Let's see if we have any other comments on the gram. Nothing else right now. Hopefully you guys on the gram are enjoying this as well. If you guys really want to want to have a ask a question and have it show up on the YouTube channel, you got to come over to YouTube because currently I don't have the live Instagram live software, uh, Instagram live integrated with the software that I use as yet. Something to, to get to eventually, but not uh, not as yet, unfortunately. All right, next up is um, uh, Patrick in Texas. He says, um, uh, Andrew, the, the Scarifier Zoom is for raking up your plugs after aerating. Uh, you can't, here's the thing, I don't even do that. I don't really, I don't rake my plugs my, typically. I, I, whenever I aerate, I leave them. You know, I know that sometimes that's kind of controversial. Some people say you must absolutely pick up all your plugs because you're committing this great cardinal sin. And I would say that if your soil is very, it's a very clay, it's a heavy clay soil to where when the plugs come out, they are, they become like small little bricks that get really hard. Then in that case, yes, pick up the plugs. But if your soil is not like that to where they will just break down, you know, over the first time you mow it or just break down over the next week or two, I would just, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through and, and pick them up because it's free organic material. Why pick it up and get and throw it out? That's, that's for me. And again, it depends on your soil, depending on what your lawn is like, you can, you, you can decide whether or not that is for uh, for you. In the video that I did last year on aeration, I actually covered that because you know people were saying, "Oh no, you got you got absolutely got to do it." So I actually address it. If you want to see that video on aeration, I think I can find it. Let me see. I think I can find it. Can I? Yes, right here. So if you want to see the video from last year on aeration, which is going to be hard to, to beat this year, um, at uh, Patrick in Texas or whoever else is um, looking to talk about aeration, then this guy will be, you, which will be your jam. Okay, uh, next up is Vashon. He says, um, best big boy lawn purchase, real mower, irrigation, leveling, real mower. Real mower, no, I mean, yeah, that, because here, here's why Vashon. Like you can get, you can, like as far as irrigation, I mean, it's a kind of a pain, but you can, you can run hoses out there and and you can do you can you can irrigate the lawn that way. You can also get rainfall to to to, to also help satisfy the watering requirements for your lawn. Um, leveling also is makes the lawn helps the appearance of it. Like from a standpoint of making it look smoother and just appearance wise looks nice. Leveling is important, but nothing has a bigger influence on how your turf looks than your than your mowing practices. So like you think about it. Like if you run irrigation, you're gonna run it you know, maybe once a week, depending on where you are in the country. I mean, some places more, but just around here once a week. Um, leveling once a season, mowing at least twice a week. If you're really serious about your lawn looking awesome, twice a week, right? At least when, through, at least like May through September, that's what, that's what you're gonna wanna do if you want the lawn to look really cool. So the thing, the thing that you do the most of, you wanna make sure you do as correctly as possible. And mowing is the thing you do more of than anything else in your lawn, right? Like even, if you even think about like, like the other products like Primo, the biostimulants, fertilizer, fertilizer, and granular, once a month. Primo, twice a month. The biostimulants, twice a month. Mowing, twice a week, at least. Um, if you're me, you know, several times a week, every other day, whenever I got time, I'll just go out there and just do it. When I need to think or just want to relax, I'll go out and I'll just mow the lawn, right? So um, you, 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 will see, you will see more, you'll get more out of the real mower than you will out of installing irrigation or leveling. Now, what I would say is if you're asking what order to do things in, I would do the real mower first and then I would do irrigation and then I would do leveling because if you level and then you install irrigation, it's gonna mess up your leveling job. So I would do in that order, I would do a real mower, Actually, exactly how you listed them, the, list, the order you listed them in is the exact order that I would do them in. So I would do irrigation, I would do real mowing, and then I would install irrigation if you want to do that. And then I would level the lawn at, um, as, the last, as the last thing. That is what I would do. All right, uh, next up is CER. It says, can Melorganite promote clover? Because my lawn blew up last year and the tenacity killed it even more. Um, no, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Melorganite's a fertilizer, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't cause clover to... I mean, it's a fertilizer, so there's a lot of clover in your lawn. It will, I mean, it's good. It's got nitrogen in it, right? So the, yes, it can, if there's already clover in your lawn, it can feed the clover. Yes, that is, that's a thing. But in and of itself is not going to, like if you have a lawn that has no clover in it and you apply malorganite, it's not gonna start causing clover to grow in your lawn. You know what I mean? It's got, it's a fertilizer. So any, any plant that uses nitrogen you use nitrogen, uh, it can use malorganite, you know what I mean? So uh, that will we'll benefit from from malorganite. So it's not, it's it's like the, uh, 
like uh, like the, the fact that it causes it doesn't mean that it is it was the, the fact that you that, that 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 clover took off more does not mean that it is the reason behind it so that's hopefully that helps all right, Dalen Krauss says, has a question here. He says, hey, Ron, if I applied pre-emergent before the end of the month, would it would that affect new sod in late March, early April? Not really. It shouldn't. I mean, no, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be. I mean, seed, yes, but the sod, the sod should be just fine. Like if you're doing it, uh, let me see, if you're doing it now, so March, April, it's February, March, April. Yeah, it's like three months, three, not three months, almost four months. Yeah, that I that 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 would be fine. That would be fine. I would I would do it, Dalen. I would do it. There should be no uh, no issues with that. Again, when we're talking about sod, I'm assuming you're talking about Bermuda sod, right? Um, cool season sod, I can't speak to from direct experience, but Bermuda will be just fine. All right, Robert Rainey is... Uh, Robert Rainey. Robert Wallace is up next. Mr. Clemson is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I went to Home Depot today and saw that Malorganite has gone up to $25 a bag from Malorganite? Good Lord. Good Lord. See, that's what made me switch away from it. I used to love Malorganite. If you guys watch the channel way back when, when I was always on my iPhone, filming all my videos, and I would, you know, Malorganite could do no wrong. And when it got to like $17 a bag, I was like, mm, this is getting, this is getting too much, man. I can't, can't do this anymore. And that's when I discovered the awesomeness that is um, the Lebanon turf fertilizers. I first started out with Proscape and then got my hands on some country club. And um, as a 22016 is that I was rolling, was using, and then I, I haven't looked back since because literally you get all the benefits. Like you look, especially like their um, these guys, like the the greens grade fertilizers, like the ADSGN stuff. Like you get all the benefits of Malorganite. You get like you get the kelp, you get you get like a a, a biosimilant and a, a quality fertilizer all in one, and the cost per application is like way less. Like you look at a bag of um, like a bag of Malorganite is 2,500 square feet. So at twenty five, I'll put it this way. So, uh, so at twenty five, twenty five dollars a bag for twenty five hundred square feet. My lawn is we're gonna just call it. We'll call it twelve thousand square feet. It's really like eleven ish, um, eleven ish uh, so far, right? So that's really that's five bags. <laughs> that's five bags of well organized. It's one hundred twenty five dollars uh, for it's, it's so it's one hundred twenty five dollars to do what one bag of Humic Max will do on my lawn, and it's not as good. It's not as good of a product as Humic Max. So there you go. So it's, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's rough, man. But it's, it's good. They actually got it back. Cause remember last year they were doing some other, they had some other fertilizer that they were carrying. It was like in a blue bag. It was like earth something. Um, and I guess that wasn't well received. So they, they, uh, they set up a deal to get, to get Milo back, but yeah, $25 a bag. That's kind of steep. I mean, if you have a small lawn, like a tiny lawn, like, you know, to 2000 square foot lawn, you want to go with Milo, I guess in that sense, it could be okay. But like, why not just go buy like Humic Max or one of the other fertilizers and one bag will last you for several months then versus, you know, versus what is not as good of a product for more money. That's, that, that's, that's the problem with it is that you're paying more and it's not as good as, um, as like the Lebanon fertilizers. So at least I got it. That's good. That's better than last year. Last year, you couldn't find it, man. You couldn't find Milo at all. All right, next up is Lavendi. He says, I, ha I bow my head in shame, but I hired a professional lawn service to spray and aerate this season. I will still do the mowing, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Dude, listen, there's no, there's no shame in that. If you don't, if you don't want to do it, you don't want to feel bothered with it, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the big thing is that it gets done, right? You, like, the pre-emergent gets put down, and then aeration, I completely get. Like, like pre-emergent is really not that bad, because you've got the granular options, and they work really well, and they're not difficult to apply. Uh, the liquids, I get it that there's more of work involved. You gotta have a backpack sprayer. You gotta wear all your PPE and everything. You gotta you gotta mix it properly. You need a scale. You, so there's more work. There's more there's more accoutrement that goes into making sure that a liquid pre-emergent application happens properly. Um, but aeration, I completely get it, man. Aeration is um, is a workout. Like you feel it the next day after you aerate a lawn. Like uh, like last year we did uh, um, Alex's lawn, my lawn. Um, and the neighbors, like the project lawn that's near ours. We did like three lawns and that was, that was not fun. That was not, not fun. So yeah, I get it. Uh, of those two, I could definitely see having like hiring out aeration to, uh, to someone else, but I get it. Do both of them. You guys want to do pre-emerger for you? No shame in that at all. You're going to do the mowing. You can do the most important part, right? So that's, that's the big deal. All right. Next up is fun with gardening. I think this is Natalie. I think that's her name. It says, uh, happy Friday, Ron. Thanks for all the advice you gave. My lawn is looking good this winter. No weeds. Nice. Yeah, so I think this is Natalie. So, uh, yes. Yes. So here, she says, hi. And then Natalie Tran. And guys, by the way, if you guys don't know, I always, I say this at least once a year. Natalie Tran is the very first customer, the very first person that bought 
from the golf course lawn store. She's my very, very first customer. And you know what she bought? Prodimi, pre-emergent. So there you go. She, she, she knows what was important with her first purchase. It wasn't fertilizer. It was, it was a pre-emergent. She says, happy Friday, Ron. Thank you so much for your products and suggestions. My lawn is looking great this winter, so I'm ready for the spring coming up. Yep, you did, you did everything right. So a weed-free lawn makes it fun to look forward to the spring. You can relax, you know, take a, take a break over the winter months and here in the next, you know, next, not too long, few, four, few more weeks, you can get your pre-emergent application down and then there's not a, lot, not, not a lot for a little while longer. And then in March, it's go time, right? Go time, which is uh, looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, no name says, can you add a new slogan to your site? Hashtag embarrass your neighbors. No, you don't want to do that. You want to, here's the thing. The idea is you want, you want to bring everybody into it. You want to make like keep taking care of your lawn. Cool. You want to make, cause you want to make a cool, a great looking lawn as a, as a point of pride. I think that pretty much everyone here in the show, right. It's in the, on the live stream right now. You're here, you're watching this. You, you care about this stuff. Because your lawn is a point of pride. Most of the people that I find, like if I look at most people that, that, are, that are really into their lawns, they're competitive in nature. So either when they were younger, they did some kind of sports or they were competitive in something, right? Like they, they're the kind of person that always had to win or just like likes winning. Um, and there are someone that enjoys, just enjoys like taking pride in a really nice lawn, right? But I mean, that's that's the personality types that you tend to find that are people that are really really um like hardcore into into uh into the lawn care game but we want more people into it you don't want to embarrass your neighbors you want them to to come in and join the uh join the craziness right you want to let the envy turn into questions and they're like hey listen i i, I give up i gotta know what are you doing what are you doing to make your lawn look like this i'm, I'm done i'm like i can't i can't be that guy that gal on the block anymore with my lawn looking you know looking horrible next to yours i want it i want to look better what do i gotta do that, that's the goal that's what we want right all right, next up is small amount 38 says first time first timer here awesome info sir i appreciate it thank you so much for taking some time out of your friday evening to come hang out and chat with us so i'm at a minimum hopefully it's entertaining and hopefully you're you're learning some cool stuff and there's there's plenty tons of value but i appreciate you coming and, and hanging out i really do appreciate it we got uh lg up next he says i've got one of those limited edition habib shirts other than the fact that he's a bills fan he's a really great guy yeah, man, listen, don't talk about the Bills. Listen, Josh Allen was my quarterback um, in fantasy this year, and he pulled me out of a lot of sticky situations. So I I am not like a, I mean, I don't have like his jersey. I'm not like a Bills fan, but I got love for Josh Allen. So I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. I'm glad you got one of those shirts too. Yeah, I know he only made like a few of them, LG. He made like a, he made like a handful. I know he has one. He sent them out to just a few people. So there's not there's not very many of them in the wild. And when I, I I asked him about, hey man, can I have the design? I can make a bunch of them. He's like, mm, no. I just want to keep it kind of, you know, small circle. I'm like, all right, well, your design, I'm not gonna argue with you over it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Made Mr. Made in the 80s says organic stuff around here in, in Dallas Fort Worth area is full of sticks, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, just keep looking. I mean, you can find like, like find out if you can call one of your local golf courses and ask them where they're getting the material from. Like they are not getting, they are not using stuff that has a lot of trash in it. They're not using that. Now, can you get, um, things, things with golf courses that they're just using straight sand. They're using uh, like a quartz sand instead of like a, a blend. But just keep calling around. There might be someone, like whoever's supplying the golf courses, you might even ask them, say, hey, listen, I'm looking for a, a blend of like a 70, 30 blend. Can you guys do that? Like I'll pay you extra. I'll pay for you guys to actually make to blend it for me. Um, and, and they might say yes. Like what around here, whenever you order uh top dressing mix, like a 70, 30 blend, like the, the local place that I've gotten it from in the past, um, they do it. They blend it for you. Like when you say, hey, I want, he'll ask you, do you want like just straight sand? Do you want just all compost? Do you want like a blend? And if you say, I want a blend, he'll mix it. They actually mix it. They have like a front loader and they, they mix it up and then they throw it in the dump truck and they bring it over to you. So if you can find a place in DFW, that area that will do that, then you can get a, you know, you might be able to get a higher quality product. So I would start with the places that, that, that um, supply golf courses because they can't sell trash products because golf courses won't buy it. And then see if they will uh, will will work with you. I mean, all they can say is no, and you're not any worse off than you are now, right? So that's that's what I would uh, I would do. You said it, do, it greens the grass up really nicely, though. Yep, that, it does. Uh, that is one thing that leveling that leveling your lawn, top dressing your lawn, does do for sure. All right, we got a golf castle up next. He says, I plan uh, planted a nice fescue lawn this past fall. It has done very well through the through this winter. Um, recently it started to yellow a bit. Uh, what would you suggest putting on it? Was it, was I thinking ironite? Depends. Why is it yellowing? Is it yellowing because it's, uh, 
like is it a stress? I mean, here's the thing: I don't have fescue lawns. So I don't even. I'm not even sure if, if, if fescue gets really cold. Does it go dormant? Is it? Is that like a stress response for it or it or something? Um, the way to answer this question, as far as what inputs it needs, Golf Castle, is to do a uh, a soil test. You know what I mean? Like, if you can you put iron on it? I guess could you put? You know, you could you could put a lot of things on it, but you don't necessarily know if that's the right answer to the question, right? If you want to know if it's there's some kind of nutrient deficiency that's causing the problem, the way to know is to get a soil test done. Like the one that I like is the ones these ones from my soil because they're easy. They're easy to use. You get your results quickly. The results are easy to understand. So that for that reason I always I like and recommend these. So um that is what I would I would say. I would not go out there and just um you know indiscriminately just throw throw stuff at the lawn um without knowing the why behind why the grass is behaving uh, the way the way it is, and a soil test is a good way of finding out um, what's causing that. Uh, Mister A, uh, A Main Eighty says, "Good luck killing Bermuda." Uh, it can. It says, uh, "It says I use Fusilade and something else in my Zoysia to control Bermuda." Yeah, so Fusilade Two in Zoysia, it, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to control Bermuda in Zoysia, and it takes it tends to take a couple of applications, but it does do a pretty good job of controlling Bermuda in Zoysia grass. But if you're trying to burn down Bermuda, like you're trying to do a renovation. Like mixing fusilade and glyphosate is a great combination, but that is non-selective. Meaning, whereas fusilade you can spray on zoysia, fusilade and glyphosate or fusilade and eraser, you cannot spray that on zoysia because it will kill your zoysia grass. So that's something to keep in mind. Like that combination, the fusilade 2 and glyphosate is only for renovations. You do not want to spray that on grass that you care about because the grass will um will look at you sideways and, and ask you what what did it do what what grave sin did it commit for you to commit for you to to to, to spank it so hard with this um with this concoction that's what will happen if grass could talk that's what it would say all right next up is demarcus thompson he says greetings ron from texas uh from north texas lawn is greening up getting ready to dominate nice nice uh be sure to put your pre-immersion out <laughs> don't uh you know i know it's, it's getting turning green but don't uh forget your pre-immersion because you're Otherwise, what will happen is about three months from now, three months from now, you and I will be talking again and it'll be like, hey, Ron, I've got like this weed, that weed, the other weed in my lawn. What pre, what uh, what herbicide can I use to get rid of it? So if you want to avoid a lot of that, uh, use pre-emergent. That would be my suggestion. All right, Ernest Brown says, good Friday and knowledge, Mr. Ron. I appreciate it, Ernest. Thank you for taking some time out of your Friday to come hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you as always. You got some more DFW areas. Edwin O also in the in the in the DFW area. Randall Lard in Texas. He says just here we go. It says uh, just your <laughs> just found your page as of October 2022. I started watching your videos. I've been treating them like a sports hype video. Can't can't wait can't wait to get back in the yard. Let's go. So it's a hype video, huh? So it's like. Uh, it's like, do you want an awesome lawn? Do you? I don't think you do. Because if you want a really awesome lawn, you got to get out there. You got to mow it. You got to get your pre down. You got to fertilize it, soil test. You got to do all that. How bad do you want it? Something like that. I need to start my videos out that way going forward. Is that what I got to do? I don't think I don't, I don't think I have that much energy. I've got, I, I've tried to be, sometimes I can be kind of, you know, a little bit monotone in my videos. So I'm trying to be a little bit more, more animated, but I've never, it's never been called. You're, you're the first to tell me that I, that my long, my videos are like a hype video, Randall. So I'm going to take that as a compliment. I'm going to take that as I am doing things right. I appreciate it. All right. Edwin O says, uh, what is your winter Bermuda lawn, uh, schedule watering liquids, granules, uh, none, none of those things. The only thing I'm really doing over the winter months are turf raking it because I get bored. And I want to get out there and just do something in the lawn. So I turf rake it. I haven't watered the lawn I can't tell you the last time I've run irrigation, mainly because we get a lot of rain here. Like it's, you know, it's it, it rained yesterday. It rained yesterday. It rained yesterday, it rained before that. So at least one day in the week, we're getting some kind of rainfall in, in Georgia. So there's just no reason to really have to run um, irrigation. The things that I would do this time of year, if I needed it, say my if my soil pH were low, I would do a lime application. But like as far as doing fertilizer, not ready, not quite time for that yet. Um, pre-emergent, we're coming up on on doing that. So that's something this this time of year we I would consider doing. But uh, as far as like anything else, for the most part, just kind of hanging out and just waiting is uh, is what I am uh, am doing. Outside of actually, that's not true. Um, um, as far as um, essential G is the only other thing that I'm doing. So I, so that is it. So I that, that is such a that is like that's like part of uh, I do that more than I mow because. Really, there's times when I'll go a long period of time. I'll go like a month and not mow the lawn during the winter time, right? But like essential G, every month that goes down. So 
outside of essential G, which is a given, um, nothing else, no fertilizer. I don't spray the liquid uh, biosimilar products so like um, the kelp product, biospectrum, release zero. I don't spray that during the winter months. The first time I do that will be more than likely March, early March, but essential G is every month. So hope that helps Edwin. Next up is Mr. Made in 80 says, love my humic max essential G smells like success. Yeah, essential G does have a little bit of eau de success to it. I will give you that. Humic max doesn't really have any odor. Like this, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't smell like anything. Like this doesn't have any, it doesn't have any, any, um, there's no fragrance. There's no, no scent to humic max. There is a little bit of a scent to, um, to essential G. There is some for that. Um, it says, uh, Mark Romano says, dish soap for a sticker. So you mean dish soap for like a surfactant? Uh, you can, but like, here's the thing, um, Mark. Reason why I'm not a fan of doing that is yes, while you can use dish soap as a surfactant, like if you come over here to the Golf Horse Lawn Store and look at like surfactant, right? An actual surfactant is, um, is like $18 and that's us shipping it to you. So if you can find it locally, you'll find it for cheaper than that, right? Cause that includes shipping. So it's so inexpensive that why not just use a product that is designed for it versus just as dish soap. It's not like, it's not, it's not, to me, it's not worth it to not use like something that's actually designed um, for, um, to want to be mixed with other, to be mixed with herbicides and designed for improving um, adhesion to, uh, to grass. There's no, you know, and plus you're not going to get the uh, the excessive amount of foaming that you with a with a proper non-ionic surfactant that you would with dish soap with dish soap you got to be really careful like if you put that in you got to you know you almost have to get like a bucket of water and pour it into your spreader you don't want to put any kind of um any kind of aeration um into into uh into the water into the tank when you're as you're filling it up like using a hose with a with a spray on it is going to be a nightmare if you're using dish soap where surfactant you're able to do that because they have they they don't they don't foam nearly as much as dish soap does. So for me, I would say just buy a proper surfactant, like an actual surfactant, and use it because they're not it's not that expensive. I mean, we have them in stock. Um, you know, if you can find them locally for a little bit less if you want to save a little bit more. But I mean, that price is it shipped to your door. So I would use that instead of uh, dish soap, in my opinion. All right, um, um, made in Mr. Mr. Made in the '80s says feature. Yeah, so he's talking about the iron product. He says, "Yep, I use feature, and but I put it down with fertilizer too. It looked almost black with too much. Yeah, with too much. So yeah, so that's that's the thing. It's um, I don't find that you need like uh, like a a dedicated iron product. I have not found that to be necessary because between like the micronutrients that I use or the fertilizer, one of like between a liquid I'm using or a granular that I'm using, one of those two is going to have iron in it, and that's enough to have a great looking lawn. You know, just when it, especially if you're applying it monthly. So I have not had I personally have not seen the need to do it. I'm sure there's people that do it, and they're going to tell me, hey, you're wrong, and be, you know, a straight iron product is the greatest instant slice of bread, and your lawn looks awesome with it. I have just not found it to be necessary. So I'm just, I'm speaking from my personal experience, not saying that it is the only way to, um, to run your lawn care program. All right. Luis celebrates four months of membership. Awesome. Thank you so much, Luis. I appreciate all the support, sir. All right. Mr. Robo says, um, uh, Mr. Made in the 80s says, what do you think of all the new robot mowers coming out? I think they, I think they serve a purpose. I don't know that. Um, I think if you're a person that you want, you just want your grass to be cut, right? If, 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 um, if having a, a mowed lawn is just a utility to you where all you care about is it just, you know, the lawn being cut and you don't have to, so you don't get like a nasty ground from the house association. Um, and it's not something that you particularly find enjoyable. Then I think robot mowers make a lot of sense. Now, um, it, when they can, whenever they can real mow and like produce like a really nice tight cut and they can lay consistent stripes, then I'd be interested. But if it's just, just as far as just cutting the grass short, like I mean, in other words, if I wanted, if all I cared about was just my, my grass being cut short, um, I would just, why not just hire someone just to cut it for me? Like that would be, I mean, frankly, like I could, I could probably, I could hire someone to cut my lawn, uh, for the price of what, of what a good row of mower costs for probably a couple of years, probably two years, if you get a good one, um, versus what it would cost for a robo mower. But for me, it is, um, it's a sense of pride. I enjoy doing it. It's also my thing that is not work. It's not karate. Literally when I need to think about a problem, I need to solve whether it's work related or, or something else going on. Like I will go out and almost mow because it's just, it's like my Zen thing. So I think for people that just want their grass to be cut and they want it to look good. I mean, they want it to look good and they just want it cut and they don't want to, have to deal with it. I think robo mowers make a lot of sense. Kind of like, like everything else, like automation is going to be come more and more a part of our lives as, um, as time progresses, 
but there's it's not going to replace it's not going to replace a um like a human touch it's not going to replace like you like you know you being able to work on it and do it yourself and 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 creating it yourself you know what i mean so for me it's also the satisfaction of doing that that's that's part of why i do it so i i think they're great i think for i think for what they are designed to, to do and for the purpose they're designed to serve i think they're they're awesome and a lot of people are going to buy them but for me not not my not going to be my thing because i i like working on my lawn so there is that all right um it says grassy says looking uh, for lawn care on youtube is like watching qvc at its best with all the different products is that what it is uh i guess it's one way of looking at it i could see that I can see that. Um, let's see here. So Clayton says, Ron, you're visiting my pre-emergent question. Um, I should have explained it better. My September application was dithiapyr. Okay, November application was prodiamine. Uh, then yes, okay, yes. So if you did dithiapyr in the in September and you did prodiamine in November, so November, December, 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 January. Uh, if it's early November, November, December, January, February. Yeah, so February. Yeah, February. I would, I would. You could do February. You could do it next month. You could you could even wait till like the middle to closer to the closer to the end of next month if you wanted to because you should still be getting uh, some some control from that application you made in November that shouldn't be gone yet so if you want to wait till the end of next month in your case I think that would that would work just fine so that's good thank you for the clarification because the way you the way I understood the question obviously I misunderstood it I thought you did it like half rate in November in, in September half rate in November I'm like whoa, whoa we can't do like, we're already we're already at a hole here we can't do any more halves so thank you for clarifying that and yeah I would wait till later on next month to um to do your next app that is what I would uh do all right um let's see here tell Lauren says Tomcat solved my mole problem um placed one bait in a new tunnel it made and a couple days i found it dead so yeah so it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach like the ways to get rid of moles um and a, a person doing all these things all four of these i have not found that they have not been able to get rid of the mole population or mole problem in their lawn so uh using reducing their food source so using like an insecticide like a celeprin that targets grubs so that you can reduce the food in the lawn uh, using a poison, like a direct poison that mimics their food source, like the Tomcat uh, mole, mole baits, that will work as well. Using a trap, like traps actually, you know, physically catch one and and um, and uh, and they, so you can remove them from your lawn that way. And then, believe it or not, um, not overwatering your lawn because the a lawn that is really soggy and moist, that's easier for a mole to burrow through. So, if you do if you do those four things, don't overwater your lawn, um, eliminate the food population. Uh, use traps and then also use a bait, a bait type product. But if you do the four of those for a period of time consistently, that you're going to be able to get rid of moles if you do that. You know what I mean? So, but it, it takes it, 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 depending on how many there are and how long they've been there, it, it, it may not be a one and done. It may not be, it's not going to be like a week later. It's all, it's going to be fixed. But if you do those four things consistently, that's a great way to reduce the amount of, um, to reduce and, and, event, and eventually eliminate the mole population in your lawn. Let's see here. Instagram, we got Sunny Bermuda coming to come say hi. What's going on, Sunny? And a few others here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. If you guys are enjoying this show, be sure to hit a like, heart, whatever it is you do on, on the gram. Feel free. Appreciate you. McNassie Motorsports is up next. He says, LG is fancy with his, his bowl, his bowl of bourbon and his glass of popcorn. I'm drinking whiskey from my glass, from my grass catcher. I think you win. We're drinking whiskey from your grass catcher. I think you win. That is because uh, you, you managed to incorporate lawn care into enjoying your libation, right? So I get it. I think you did. I think you're, uh, you, you win. I think, I think you, you, take, you take LG on that one. I think you, you do win the LG on that one there. All right. Uh, LG says, Cedric is quite the entertainer tonight. Uh, LG, you're the man. You guys are going back and forth. That's pretty awesome. And then Bill W says, thanks, Ron. Got your pre-emerge this week. Let me know when to apply it. So Bill, if you are in Georgia, I would say um, any time now, whenever, whenever you have time to get out there and, put, and apply it, it would be fine. If you want to, I'd say the, the first week, if you want a date, if you're in Georgia, the, let me see here. When is, what does the calendar say? Let me see when the calendar is. Uh, the first weekend in February is the third. So the week of the third, is that right? Yeah, February 3rd, February 3rd, 4th and 5th. Great weekend to do your pre-emergent. So if you want a time to do it, that is when I would, um, that's when I would go for it. So you can do it sooner, but that's, that's a, that's a good time. All right. Next up, Lamont Smith says, um, hello, Ron, love the new products that's out. I appreciate that Lamont. Um, yeah, appreciate all the love and support. It took a lot of work guys. Like it took, I was working on this since this last year to make this happen, to make sure the numbers work, to make sure it actually makes like, makes sense to actually do it. 
Um, and I'm really happy that we were able to bring back not just humic Mac, but also introduce two other fertilizers so you have like a complete solution. So you got, you know, you got humic Max, you got a, a, um, a complete fertilizer that can be used for seeding projects, a starter fertilizer, however you want to use it. If you got a phosphorus deficiency, it's also good for that. And then you also have a higher potassium fertilizer. So really happy about the three options that are now in the store and, uh, you guys can, can, can go for it. It's all yours. And again, for anyone that's joined the live stream here late, something that I, I shared earlier as a first part of the show is Humic Max is available for pre-order. Um, it's, um, we have it set to, in here it says it's going to ship mid-February, but I intend to ship it before that uh, because the, uh, it's going to be here before that. It's going to be here before mid-February. Um, and if you want to save 5% on a bag, and there's not really any limits, you want to buy one bag, you want to buy five bags, 10 bags, however much you want to buy, you can save 5% on it um, through the end of this month. So from now through the through January 31st, if you pre-order pre uh, Humic Max, um, you will um, you'll save five percent, and you don't and you have to enter any kind of code. It's already set up to where it'll just be automatically applied at checkout. And what I'm going to do is, uh, if it comes in stock before the end of the month, which is a, a chance it actually might, that the sale is still going to still going to run, right? So it's still going to give you guys the opportunity to load up um, through the end of this month uh, on Humic Max. It's only Humic Max. It doesn't apply to the other fertilizers, but just to the end of the month, you can save five percent on it if you uh, if you so desire. If you like it, you use it, you want to. Uh, to roll with it this year, you can save yourself some money. All right, Zach Hoyt says, also applying it all in the same day. What was your question, Zach? I'm trying to see what you asked that I answered and where you're saying apply all in the same day. You said, oh, uh, moles? Uh, yeah, 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 you could, because they're all different. Yeah, so if you, if you had the, the bait, you could do the bait in the same day, you could put the traps down in the same day. Uh, if you're gonna use a celeprin, to help eliminate the um, their food source, you could do that because they're all different. You know what I mean? It's not like applying like it's not like applying uh, two herbicides in the same day, right? Like that you would not want to do um, unless I mean, unless you're very careful with the rates that you're using. But you're talking about you're talking about products that are all working together to solve a common cause, which is to get rid of moles, but they don't interact with each other. It's not like the mole like the, the like a celeprin is influenced by the mole poison like the, the the bait and vice versa so you could do them all on the same day if you wanted to if you are going to do them the order that i would do them is i would set your traps i would put down the baits and then the last thing i would do is do a celeprin because that way you put down the you know you're gonna blanket the lawn with this insecticide you don't want to have to be walking all through the lawn afterwards after you just spray the entire lawn with insecticide so i would i would do that last if you're going to do all of them in one day so traps baits and then finally uh, insecticide if that's the way you want to go. All right, good stuff. Great question. Great question, Zach. And next up here, uh, Billy Gilbert says, can you use a real mower on any lawn? Uh, I mean, technically, yes, but they're really designed, they, they're designed for shorter cut turf. So really, if you're mowing your lawn an inch and a quarter or less. I mean, I know there, there are some mowers like the True Cut will go up much higher than that, but if you're mowing your lawn, I'll even give you an inch and a half. If you're mowing your lawn at an inch and a half or less, that is where real mowers really shine. So real mowers are not a great option, they're not the most ideal option for say like St. Augustine grass. Now there are people that real mow their St. Their St. Augustine. I have some a viewer sent me a picture of his, his real mowed St. Augustine and it looks great. But like, uh, but a, a better mower for a tall grass is a rotary. Like get a rotary, get a, a sharp blade on it, keep it sharp because those grasses like to be cut, you know, three, four inches tall and real mowers, most of them anyway, don't go much above two inches. So if you have a rye grass, if you have a Kentucky bluegrass, if you have Bermuda, if you have zoysia, you have centipede, like any grasses that, that thrive at shorter cutting heights, that's a prime candidate for real mowing. And you have the and if you have the time to do it, and you have the time and desire to do it, because real, real mowing is is awesome. Like it looks and like nothing makes your turf look better, in my opinion, than than a real mowed lawn. But it's one of those things that it, it's uh, it's for people that enjoy working in their lawns, for people that, that that don't have a problem getting out there twice a week and mowing their grass. If you're someone that only cuts your grass once every couple of weeks, don't buy a real mower. It's not it, that's not the that's the, not their intended use. Like when they're when you are when the grass is mowing, you want to be running them. Uh, at least twice a week. And that's when you're gonna really see the benefits where your, your lawn will literally look like a golf course because the, the way they cut the grass, it causes less injury to the turf. It's just a, it's like one of the best things you can do for your lawn um, if you're using a grass type that 
um, is designed or does better when meet when mowed at shorter cutting heights, you know? So again, not your fescue, not your St. Augustine. There are people that do it. Um, like some of the push reel mowers will go up higher and they use those on St. Augustine and, and, um, and fescue. But the problem you start to run into is that if the mower has any kind of a roller on it, which the, all the good, all the really good ones have a front roller and you have a tall grass, what tends to happen is if, you, if you're, you're mowing it, the roller will literally push the grass down and you don't have the, it's like just laying it down and you don't have the grass um, being presented to the reel and bed knife to be cut. You know what I mean? So that's why you're just, you work, you're, it's just not, it's not ideal. You can do it, but it's really not, like reel mowers are not designed for, for, for tall grass. They, you know, they are designed for a shortcut turf, like an inch and a half and lower is where reel mowers really shine. Uh, that's in my opinion. I mean, and, and I think the fact that outside of a, the thing, true cut will go up to two inches. There's maybe a couple others, but no greens mower goes up to two inches. They're all like my, my greens master, which is, um, I think has one of their higher cutting heights goes to an inch and a quarter. Right. So that, and that's, that's maxed out. That's as high as it's going to go. So, uh, if you have a, the grass type that like one of the ones I mentioned, Billy, and you have the time real mowing is pretty awesome. Your grass will look, will look incredible. Um, and it's going to be, it's gonna be really hard to, to match you if you decide to go that route. All right. Uh, Michael Auger says Milorganite is at, it's about $14 at true value for the 30 pound, two pound bag. That's a good price. If you guys are on the Milorganite train, you should buy that. That's a, <laughs> that's a really good price. Like that's better. That's better than uh, the pricing that I, that I saw that when I stopped using it. So yeah, if there's if you can find a true value nearby, if that's a, like a, a nationwide thing and you can find it at that price, by all means, load up on it because that's not that is not uh, that is not typical. <laughs> Mark Romaro says my neighbors have started to care more. It tends to happen, you know what I mean? Because I mean, even if you even if you are um, you know someone that is a uh, you know say you're not into your grass, you're not into your lawn that much, right? Or you're into it a little bit, but not so much. But then the guy next to you, like you have someone like me, like Ron Henry next to you, right? Even if you don't go to the extent that I go to on my lawn, you're gonna you're gonna pick it up a little bit because you don't want people to be driving by and they like, especially if they see my lawn first, they see my lawn like, oh man, it looks really good. And they'll be like, what on earth is happening to all the other lawns in this neighborhood? You don't want, to, you don't want the contrast to be so much that people are like, you know, what's going on? So it tends to it tends to elevate you know at least the lawns on your street, which is cool. It's fun. It's fun. Plus, think about it. Like you know, it's uh like whenever Alex, I don't know. If, here's the thing. It might only be me, but whenever it tends to be uh, like the mowing season, and whenever like I know what a true cut sounds like. So if I haven't mowed and, I, and I'm like sitting here and I, and I hear like Alex's mower start up or I hear a lawnmower start up, and I can't be the only one that does this. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm only the crazy one. But when I have a mower, hear a mower outside startup, I mean, I'll go out and look out the window and see who's mowing and like, what are they, you know, what they, what are they working with, what's going on here? Because you don't, you don't want the competition getting too far ahead. And I'm sure it's just me. I'm sure none of you guys have ever looked outside whenever someone else is mowing their lawn and made you feel like I need to also go out there and assert dominance at some point. If within 24 hours, I feel compelled that I too must now go mow. Again, maybe it's just me. Uh, maybe I'm just a crazy person, but I, I, I want to think that I'm not like to think that I'm not. All right, uh, Patrick says Duval number 904. Okay, thanks, uh, Patrick, I guess. And then Brew Cruise Fishing says, Happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, uh, Brew Cruise Fishing? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And let's see, Rick B says, Living Earth in Rockwell has some good compost you can mix here in D uh, DFW. So there you go. So you got an option. Someone just chimed in saying that uh, Living Earth, which I guess is a company, in that area, they will give you some better mix. So there you go. So you've got, you got someone to call and say, hey, listen, you got to talk to them. Say, listen, my standards for top dressing mix are very high. I don't want to have to get like 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 bark and other trash out of here. So can you guys, I need your good stuff. I need the, I need your top shelf top dressing mix. Can you guys hook me up with that. Uh, Edwin O is back. He says, try Alpine uh, materials in South Lake. I get my sandy loam from there. They deliver too. See, look at that. You guys are all solving the problem. See, we're all, you know, lo, you know, golf course lawn squad unite. We're all, we're all coming together and solving this man's problem of getting, you know, substandard top dressing mix. We can't, we can't have that. It's no good. Can't have it. All right, Pippin, uh, uh, Pippin Lap, uh, Lap, Lapik uh, says in California, weeds growing through rye winter. What should I do? I did not spray pre-emergent before spreading the rye. Should I wait to kill the rye after winter? Okay, so you said you have weeds growing through the winter rye. What should I do? I did not spray the pre-emergent before spreading the rye. Should I wait to kill the rye after winter? Okay, so 
what I'm reading, Pippin, and maybe I'm getting this wrong. It sounds like you had you 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 said winter rice. It's almost so like you you seeded your lawn. You you did you overseed your your Bermuda lawn with rye grass, and you're having some weeds come through. If the if that is the case, and yes, you certainly absolutely can wait until like springtime to get rid of it. You can you know use something like Celsius to kill off the rye grass and um, you know have your Bermuda take off and let it you know do what it's going to do. Uh, or you can use a um, a post emergent herbicide that is safe for the rye grass, something like um, something like Tenacity, something like this. Depending on which, I don't know what kind of weed you're dealing with, but something like um, like Tenacity, something like this is safe for is safe for rye grass, not so safe for Bermuda. So if you're going to just you have like a few clumps of weeds here and there, and you're looking for something to spot spray weeds. Uh, you could go with something like this. You could also use like a three way, like. Um, we also carry like a like a like a like triad, like any kind of three-way, like that will work as well. Uh, so it just depends. I'm I'm answering the question based on based on the way you ask you, you phrase the question. It's almost like rye is not what your lawn normally is. It's like you see you overseeded it or something this past fall. If that's the case, you can kill the existing weeds that are in your lawn with a post-emergent herbicide. So something like actually, let me get here and I can just let me show you real quick. Um, so we'll go away from fertilizer. We will go to weed killer. So a couple of options. You got like tenacity, like what I showed earlier. And then you've got triad. Like these two options are safe. Like for the, this one, triad select is safe for cool season grasses. And uh, tenacity is also safe for cool season grasses. So depending on what weed you're trying to target, um, either one of these will work. So I, I hope that helps. I'm, again, I'm answering it based on my understanding of it. I apologize if that's not what you're... If that's not what you were asking. Uh, no name says I can see it now. Open AI's lawn GPT. It's gonna be a thing, man. I mean, Open AI is no joke. It's it is going to change things. It's gonna change. I mean, it's already changing things, but it's uh, it's it's gonna make it's gonna make a big difference in um, it's gonna change the world in ways we can't even really anticipate just yet. You know, so it's kind of like the internet, but on steroids. It's gonna make it make a huge huge difference. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, scary peeper says, hi, Ron, 20, happy 2023. I remember you from last year. I think you were here last year. Cause I know my name is weird. We have a Halloween company. No problem. In that case, in that context, your name makes perfect sense. It says, what are your thoughts on painting dormant Bermuda? Thanks. I've never done it. I've seen it done badly. And I, that kind of turned me off on it. However, I've also seen it done well. Like if you look at the lawn tools, they did theirs and it looked really good. So I think done well, it can look nice, uh, done poorly it can look like you painted your grass. You know what I mean? I mean, everyone's gonna know you painted it, but it will look like if you do it poorly, it'll look splotchy. You'll have some areas that are really, really dark green and others that are lighter. So if you do a good job of it, it can look okay. I've never done it. So I can't comment personally, but I, if, if you do it properly, it can look good. Like I'll, I'll just leave it at that. If you, if you wanna see what dormant Bermuda, Bermuda that's been painted can look like, look up the Lawn Tools YouTube channel and because they did it, they did, a, they did the whole thing. Like they did like a Christmas theme where it was painted like red and green during Christmas. And I think now they're just back to green, I think. I have to, you have to look and see. Um, but yeah, you, you can pull it off if it's done properly. It's, it's all in the execution. If it's executed properly, it can look okay. All right, Brian C is up next. He says, hey Ron, pleasure to meet you at the tour party. I know you're at Real Rollers to try out a few mowers that Lee reached out to me about also. What did you think of the one you tried? Okay, so you're asking me about something that I'm not really supposed to talk about yet. And I will tell you the, the bigger, I'll say it this way, the larger, the bigger mower of the two, I liked better. So I will say that. That's, that's what I'll answer, because we're not, because technically I'm supposed to talk about it um, as yet, but yeah, the one that you're talking about, I think if you've if you are if you're if you're if you've shown you the two of them, then um, the larger of the two is the one that I I personally find better in its current state than the other one. But that can it's also subject to change. Also subject to change. All right. Uh, no name says awesome name Lamont. I must say it's the best. Yeah, you would say that. You would say that. No name. You know name. No name's name is. Uh, okay. All right. Whatever. Okay. But you would say that because I know you. I know you in real life, so I, I can see why you're a little bit biased to the name Lamont. All right, uh, Sandria says, hi, Ron, can I put down pre-emergent in March when it is cold in Michigan? Uh, so here's what I would say. I, I would not do pre-emergent if the ground is still frozen where you are or if you're still expecting snow where you are. So I, I don't have a lawn in Michigan, but I would imagine like late March, a late March timeframe is, 
your the, your window for pre-emergence is likely opening up then. So when you're not when you don't expect any more snow, the ground's not going to freeze anymore. But before average soil temperatures are 55 degrees, so that's, that's your answer. Before your before your soil temperatures are, are the average, not just one day. Before the average soil temperatures are 55 degrees, um, you should apply pre-emergence. So in Michigan, March sounds reasonable like mid to late march sounds sounds pretty reasonable to me assuming you're not going to get m snow in michigan in march but I, again i don't live there so i don't know what, what kind of you know what snow is like there if we got snow in march in georgia that would not be good would not be bueno but uh but yeah so just but the, the best answer is before not not when before the average soil temperature in your area is at 55 degrees you should apply your pre-emergent he says, great show, Ron. Thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate it. I do appreciate it so much. Thank you for um, for watching. Uh, let's see. Uh, Doug says, my neighbors do more complaining than elevating. Man, they, they, they just haven't come around as yet, Doug. Just keep keep working on them. Just keep just lead by example. Just lead by example. Don't, you know, just they'll, just, just, just they'll come around. They will come around. All right. Billy Gilbert says, thank you, Ron, for answering my real more question. I'm in Washington and have your standard lawn. Okay, so in Washington, it's pro well. It's interesting. You have a standard lawn, but if you have a ryegrass lawn or a um, or a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, those can be real mode. It's only if you have fescue. If you have a fescue, like a tall fescue lawn, it's, it's just not the best grass type for real mowing, in my opinion. I just wouldn't. I think you're you're like you're using kind of like how using a rotary mower to to mow to cut Bermuda at low cutting heights is the wrong tool for the job. Using a real mower to cut fescue at tall heights is the wrong tool for the job. Can you do it? Yes. Is it going to produce a great result? Probably not. So if it depends on the kind of grass you have. If you've got a rye grass or a Kentucky bluegrass, both of which will grow in Washington, you might be on your way to getting a real mower, you know? So it just depends on which kind of grass you have. It's only a fescue or any any grass that is designed to grow tall that I would not um, I would not consider a real mower for. You'd be working against yourself. All right, so let's see here. We have Jose A says, hey, late to the show. Lots of POA coming out. I have some coastal herbicide. Can I go ahead and throw it down for my spring pre-emergent in the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, in the house? Uh, not really. So it's the thing is, uh, Jose, really the time to prevent POA in your lawn would have been last fall. You know what I mean? So you, you can you go and use coastal now? Sure, but it's not, but the, the, it's not gonna do anything for the POA that's already there. Like your best bet, if we can just fast forward to this next fall coming up, is get your pre-emergent down. If you have coastal, get your coastal down in September, like early September, get it down, get down a little earlier, apply that. That's gonna do a lot for keeping POA out of your lawn. This time of year, if you've already got it, you're really on post-emergence um, to try and get rid of it. So you've got a couple of options. You can use image, which is gonna work really slow and it's gonna take multiple applications, or you can use uh, certainty. You can use this, like this with a surfactant is what I would use to get rid of POA this time of year in a Bermuda, in a Bermuda or in a warm season lawn. Uh, that is what I would use. You could, Coastal is not gonna do a whole lot for you to prevent uh, more POA this time of year. Like that, that ship's already sailed. Like the POA, the POA that you're seeing now is just now really coming to life and taking off because the temps are not quite as cold, but that, that uh, they started a month ago, two months ago. You know, they started germinating, you know, months ago and it's only now you're really starting to see them uh, take off and the time to prevent them was really, you know, September of last year, not uh, not now. Gilby, uh, Billy Gilbert is back. He says, I mow super early and love hearing all the neighbors firing up after me. See, so it's not just me. I, see, Billy, thank you. I, I don't feel like a crazy person now. He says, I'm sure it's because I just mowed and no other reason. It's like dogs barking, LOL. It is, I mean, I, mean I'm, I'm, I admit it. I completely admit it. If Alex is off to a Saturday, and like after karate, if Alex is, is out, out there mowing, I almost feel guilty. I'm thinking, man, well, he's mowing. When did the last mow? I mowed uh, two days ago. Yeah, probably get a mowing today. So I, I feel like I got to go out and do it. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm not putting in the work if I, if I don't go out there and mow it. So uh, so yeah, at least I'm not the only one. I, I appreciate that, Gilby. Thank Gil, uh, Billy. Thank you for letting me know that I am. Uh, I'm not crazy. Well, or, or or we're both crazy. Maybe maybe that's more accurate. All right, um, Mark Romano says, it's funny how the mowing starts on the weekend. It's like a call, <laughs> like a call of the wild. One guy starts and it motivates all the wives to mention to their husbands, like, huh, you know, our lawn's looking kind of bad. You should get out there and mow it. Yeah, it's like a chain, like a chain reaction, right? All right, NMS Otter's up next. Is running late to the stream, but join when I could. Also, gently hit the like button. Happy Friday. I appreciate that, uh, NMS Otter. Thank you for the love and support. I really do appreciate you doing that. 
Uh, it is a great way to support the channel. And then we got Pippin uh, saying, you got that right. I have Bermuda and I overseed it. Thank you. Great. So I, I read through the lines and I think I got your answer correct. So I'm glad it was useful. All right. It looks like our last question of the evening. It looks like our last question, guys. You guys have got me all talked out. And it's like it's Gene the Lawnbrook says, follow-up question, Ron. Top dress last spring with a 70-30 mix. Would you say leveling this spring with just mason sand? Maybe not a good move to level a bumpy slope. I think you could do either way. You could go mason sand if you want. You can do um, you could do another 70-30 mix. If it were me, I would do the 70-30 mix again. Mainly because I'm a big fan of adding organic material to the soil when I'm top dressing. But if you want to do mason sand, you can. My lawn and Alex's lawn, both of our lawns, which I think look pretty good, have had a combination of both. They've had straight sand. They've had um, uh, blends. The front lawn has even had um, straight, uh, straight organic, just straight um, uh, compost, both in both in the uh, super sod product and also in uh, carbonized PN. This spring, that's something I'm planning to do. I'm probably I'm planning to get my hands on some carbonized PN. And I'm gonna do that on the spring, do that on the front lawn. I'm probably gonna lay it down and uh, and give it that nice, that super green pop. Like the, the color of the front lawn has never looked, I, I, the, 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 it's hard to describe, it's hard to describe how deep the green was. And you can see it, like I can, you know, I can actually show you guys. Um, but the, this pictures don't even really do it justice. If you look here, you go to shop, you go to Miramichi Green and go to Carbonized PN. So when I top dress, this is a couple of years back with it, um, let's see here. Yeah, so this is me using carbonized PN on the front lawn. There's a video on it. If you guys want, I'll link it to you in the description. This is me putting carbonized PN all down on the front lawn and raking it in. And um, then, then I watered it in. I raked the entire, I rolled the whole lawn and watered it in. And then this is the lawn 10 days later. And I, I have to tell you, I know people always say pictures don't do it justice, but the pictures really don't do justice how deep and vibrant the green was like it's 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 never really looked like that outside of when I've used carbonized PN on it. So I want to get that color again this year. So that's the plan as far as um, going forward with a with with a, a whole lot of carbonized PN on the front lawn for a top dressing. So so yes, it's up to you. I say I like to say it's up to you, uh, uh, Gene the Lawn Brooks. If it were me, I would do a blend. But if you want to just go straight mason sand, you can. It, again, it depends on this problem you're trying to solve. If you've got some areas that um, where leveling is your main goal, your main thing is to just to is to just add structure and smooth out bumpy areas, then going 100% sand has some some merits to it. But it's not that much better than a 70/30 blend. And again, the 70/30 blend has the advantage of putting organic material in the soil. You know what I mean? So. For me, I would, I would, um, I would still lean lean towards that seventy thirty if you can get your hands on it. All right, no name says everyone around me uses a service to treat their lawns and another service to mow. I get lots of questions on who does my lawn. It's always nice, right? <laughs> That's always nice. And then no name says thanks for another sh great show. You're very very welcome. I appreciate you. And then Quan um, Quanbena Kumi, he says soil temps in Michigan hit fifty five degrees around April. Green cast online. So there you go. Cool. So if they hit in April, let's say they hit. The first week of April, then late March is when I would do pre-emergent because you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it when soil temps, it's not when soil temps are at 55 degrees, it is prior to. So whenever, whenever when they're getting close, when soil temps are in the you know low 50s, high 40s consistently, that's a good time, it's a good window to get your, your pre-emergent down. Again, when it comes to pre-emergent, sound like a broken record, a little bit early is better than a little bit late. You know what I mean? So early is better than late when it comes to pre-emergent, so. So there you go. Well, guys, gals, thank you guys so much for hanging out in the live stream tonight. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I missed. Uh, let's see. So you guys, I told you guys about the new blog on biosimulant. So feel free to check that out if you're looking for a cool read as far as an article you can also share with friends, family around why biosimilants are important, why you should consider integrating them into your lawn care program. Of course, we have uh, the new fertilizers uh, Humic Max is available for pre-order. The other fertilizers are already in stock and shipping. And if you want to share, um, you know, a link to the new fertilizers, or you just want to be able, be able to remember it easily, go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and um, put in that uh, that good stuff. That is a that is a that's an easy way for you to be able to remember. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that up. It's going to be golfcourselawn.store forward slash uh, the good stuff. So let me put that in the chat for you guys. One last, one more again, as we say, like to say here in Georgia, uh, 
well, not all of us, but you know, I'll, I'll say it. One more again, I'll say that for you guys. And uh, let me see if there's any last questions, comments, concerns before I put the uh, outro music on. And it doesn't look like it. So that, guys, thank you guys so much. Again, have a great weekend. Get your pre-emergent. Again, if you guys want a cool sticker, if it means anything to you, any orders of Primo Max or Celeprin throughout this weekend, we'll have one of these included um, in the packaging for you. So again, thanks for all the love and support. Thanks for taking some time. So I'll have to talk to myself and uh, look out tomorrow morning for the, that video on pre-emergent. It's gonna go live 7 p.m., 7 p.m., 7 a.m. Eastern time. Have a great weekend. Take care.